What's going on, everybody? Captain Robear and crew here for Stormforge episode 39. Back on par with Marrow Strand again. Let's go. Wait, why is there's Strand, a 0.5? 0.5 because they left in the middle of combat last week. Oh. So I 0.5. We can't see your screen. Oh, there, now you can. Hey, there we, there we go. go. Oh, wow, there's the captain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. There he goes. A wild blushes in the chat. Look at there. Oh, How we doing, hey, buddy? Kyle, how are you doing, buddy? Kyle? <laughs> mm, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, buddy, Kyle. He's the fucking shit, by the way. I'm going to make that my shout out for this week. <laughs> an absolute fucking godly human Kyle's being. Kyle's incredible. We love it. 100%. If you need a voice talent for all sorts of different things, go ahead and uh, take a look into him. He does fantastic stuff. I've worked with him in the past. He's the voice of Shin Malfa and Last Word and Thorn things. Love it. Who's got big announcements they want to let the community know about before we hop in? Um, I think the only announcement I have, and I'm scrolling to see if if I can get the facts straight hold on <laughs> I'm in so many discord servers I need to leave some um, there we go it's here and then what channel is it in in that one there we go um, uh, so uh, for, uh, my first dungeon uh, some incredible TWG creators um, they have a podcast so I highly recommend checking it out um, I was on one of them and I think that I turned on two of them three of them I was on three of them, and I think they're very fun to play with and very fun to listen to. But uh, my first dungeon is doing a a kind of watch party, kind of screening of teach RPGs and actual plays. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, I think last week they did part two, and the week before they did part one of Gidea, which is a, a Bluebeard's uh, uh, Bluebeard's Bride's actual play that was award winning as well. Very really really good. Made one by one of my a priest by one of my friends, Hamna. Um, and they did a viewing of that and they're going to be doing a viewing of um, an, I believe an episode I don't think it's the whole series that'd be a lot but an episode of Beyond the Brook on Tuesday April 2nd at 8pm Eastern um, I'm going to be in chat um, probably I don't know I think they ask, they'll probably ask me questions so if you want to know any behind the scenes stuff you can check that out I don't know if Ed will be because I'll be very late for very late for both of us but Ed has, to, has an actual normal sleeping schedule I um. I intend on being there uh, so that gives me two hours of sleep between Eden Falls and yeah but Ooh. no I, I'm 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 intending on being there as well because it would be really nice to just chat about something we're very proud of with a lot yeah. of very cool people it's it's gonna be a not just a screening but it's also gonna be a a like objective discussion about it so it's not just gonna be us gonna be some people who are like professionally professional journalists and critiques who'll be talking about the show so if you want to hear what we have to say and also some professional what they have to say about the the baby we created check that out at tuesday april 2nd at 8 p.m eastern over on my first dungeons discord if you check out their twitter account they've recently tweeted about it so you can check find a link to their discord there um i think that's the only thing i can think of that i'm i need to announce that i want to announce Uh, well, uh, I've mentioned it already, but Eden Falls, uh, over on Wounded Warrior Project's Twitch channel, produced by the incredible Sam, GM'd by the OK myself, and populated by an amazing cast of Becca Godsey and Justice Fancho, and Sam as well. Oh my god, she's everywhere! Uh, but it's, uh, it's <laughs> terrific. We've... <laughs> We're into our last four episodes now. Um, it's, uh, the... Narrative is dictated by donations, and last episode our uh, audience were particularly generous uh, with their donations. I was not necessarily that generous with the plot progression that we had. A lot of uh, very, uh, very dramatic stuff happened in our last episode, thanks to our audience. I thought it was great. Um, <laughs> but we are on uh, every Tuesday, but we will also be on uh, two nights next week. We'll be on Tuesday and we'll be on Thursday over at the Wounded Warrior Project channel. Um, and uh, keep an eye on my socials. I think I have something that I'll be announcing tomorrow, but I need to confirm that. But yes, keep an eye on uh, my socials as well. Edward underscore Spence underscore. So yeah, that's everything for me, I think. That's my stuff. 
you know, I'm going to throw something else out here. I will not say this is guaranteed because I've been down this road something close to umpteen times. Uh, and I have no, I do, I dare not hope for fear of failure and knowing that it will probably just be my life and be my luck saying S sod off, you don't get this. I'm not going to promise it. However, tomorrow there is an engineer coming over to our place and they are going to see if it is possible for us to install fiber. Hello, signal private messenger. What is happening? Uh, uh, hello? Don't worry. Hello. <clears throat> I'm going to fix whatever that is going on over here at Edge. Okay, well. Uh, yeah, um... Uh, basically, if I if if everything goes well with this engineer and and stuff actually works, I will have proper fiber, which means a whole bunch of stuff. It means that the several hundred gigs worth of saved up BG three footage that I have been saving in the occasion and event that this actually happens is finally going to get sent to BG and B's main drive and is going to be able to be edited into proper videos. So we may be able to do stuff on that front of things properly. Thank goodness. Hi, I totally didn't plan for this to be a thing and have it blow up in my face because the best laid plans do not always <laughs> survive contact with reality. That's exciting. <clears throat> but yeah, also um, on that personal front, it means that if that happens, I might be able to start doing streams again. And I'm definitely not going to be doing it all the time on like a super focused thing, but I would love to do a nice cozy very chill stream from time to time you know like there are, th there's a lot of nonsense Did you where see we the new just... hobbit like this <laughs> little me? cozy simulator thing that was just announced i Shire did dude. not but this sounds absolutely fantastic and i need to yeah, do this just get to live a little hobbit life especially the trailer for a Stardew Stardew valley in the shire that's yeah shire do <laughs> I feel like I need to do it. But also, I have a I have a terrifying admission, which is that when I say cozy, I mean I mean not just in the genre of games, I mean I mean personally cozy to me, which yeah. is gonna be a bit different in definition because I'm sitting here being like, let you know, let's play some old RTSs or let's play XCOM. XCOM's <laughs> cozy, right? Where you're I constantly so. stressing about the death like of Sim. your characters. Sim's cozy. Yeah, you know, like there's XCOM. Never like, tell me the odds. Never <laughs> tell me that it's a 99% shot. You know, I will miss that shot. <laughs> it was preordained. <laughs> but nah, um, it's it's a lot of really, uh, it's a lot of really fun shit that's going on right now. Um, if that works, and I will know by the end of tomorrow. So. Fingers crossed, if that is going to be the case, uh, yeah, I will start streaming and doing things, and, uh, yeah, I, I'll need to figure out if it's Twitch or YouTube or both, but, you know, let's, it's, it's going to be an exciting time, hopefully. We'll roll with that. It'll oh, be yeah. all good. We love that you'll have the casual ability to be able to choose if you want to drop a stream or not. That yeah. makes me happy. And it will be nice to be actually able to do the work that I've been intending to do for God knows how long. <laughs> I love that. I'm gonna I'm 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 lift this one little lid on the thing. I I counted the number of scripts a while back. Oh my god, I have easily done 30 plus scripts and like theoried <laughs> out another fucking 20 more or so for, for BG and B. I've written the damn things and everything. I've just not recorded because I know that any gameplay footage I gather for all this nonsense never going to be able to send it. It would take me literally 36 hours to send on the upload speed that I have for all the requisite stuff. So like, there is a lot of backlog to this. I have been working <laughs> for months on this stuff without any anything uh, to goddamn show for it. And, that's and so sad. Uh, thank God the game is still like a really, a really hype success months and months and months later. But like, God damn. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. <laughs> oh, so the most uh, polite British done. way possible. <laughs> uh, so I am not even minorly diffed. I am majorly diffed. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they have my entire street is being ripped up side by side because fiber is going up to my house. I'm so glad my neighbors don't know 
it's entirely because of me because people are having to park their cars <laughs> two blocks away. And let me let me tell you how much of an inconvenience that is for Ethel and the rest of the boomers that are on my street. It might as well be the end of the world. Like, uh, <laughs> I thought you were talking about Auntie Ethel from BG3 for a moment. Me too. Ooh, Auntie <laughs> Ethel. Oh, you don't want to get you don't want to get her mad. Oh, she has never been named more properly, Auntie Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> I, what have know. Ethel's done to you, Robert? Jeez. Hey, that's for my Galadron campaign, where I'm eventually going to try to kill my hag mother at some point in time. Mo hashtag mommy issues. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I, I don't generally do this because I don't like to fill up the thing, but I have a perfect soundbite for this. You petulant bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. Uh, mm. Radio would be so proud of you, by the way. Ethel, 10 out of 10. <laughs> We're waiting to find out, by the way. Anybody who knows Radio Mang, uh, who I met on Mixer, like my first week playing, <laughs> and has been in at least one of my campaigns since I've started. He hosted the Craft Beer Awards on Tuesday in San Diego, and he was as nervous as I have ever seen him on Monday while we played. So if you uh, if, if you have his Twitter out there or if you're in the Discord, send him well wishes because we know that he crushed it. He was born to be a cheesy host uh, 100%. So... Uh, uh, and I told him uh, to just go ahead and uh, take Jimmy Kimmel's job since I hate him. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't, all of, all of the, the night, late night, they all look the same to me. I don't know which one Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, it doesn't matter. They're all like James Corden now and quit sending us oh, your, your, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, that's a whole other, that's a whole other issue. Seth Myers is okay. I like Seth Myers. If Seth you're actually Myers, good, like you're Seth buried Myers. at three o'clock in the morning. Let's just have it all. Hundred percent. Give up wearing a suit. You're like, I'm just gonna wear what I want. <laughs> oh. Hold actual interviews where I actually like listen. Solo Graham Norton is the gold standard of oh, the uh, yes mm. the talk show. I'm yeah. terribly sorry. We sent you the uh, we sent you the trash so we could keep the treasure. <laughs> um, don't you dare take <laughs> Graham Norton. We fight you. It's okay. I, I lived through Graham James Norton Cole clips back. like a week later after they happened. So it's like it's cool. <laughs> I can see usually the best of the best. Um, Oh, God bless that man. Uh, yeah, so over here, uh, thanks for everybody who came out and said wonderful things about Stormforge and all the campaigns throughout PAX Weekend. That will never get old to me, and I will never stop taking time to talk to you guys and say hello and take pictures. So <clears throat> thanks for being brave and coming up to me. I don't really have anything going on, and if I do, I will let you know if I actually have to get to some place. So... Uh, yes, always stop me. It's it's fantastic to be afforded uh, the privilege to get to talk about the silly stuff that I do on the internet for a little bit. So thank you guys. You're awesome. Thanks for Voodoo Ranger for having our space in the lounge. Once again, we took up three times the space and we still didn't even come close to having enough room. So we're gonna keep expanding and expanding, expanding. We had to put up reserve tables just for a couple of us to be able to like sit down whenever we wanted to like it was crazy yeah. um the day you get a move too the day you weren't there over <laughs> uh, patrick had to come in and be like hey uh this is a reserve table for this group over here for my group <laughs> I, we look like the jerks we're like, hey this is the cool I, kids table crazy. actually mm -hmm. <laughs> the worst part is that it was just too loud and then eventually yeah. we found an even better spot in the media room <laughs> sorry to people we moved Saturday was bonkers at PAX. It was nuts. nuts. It was very, very busy. Uh, I took the time while it was raining to sleep because I didn't have a voice anyway. So I laid there and I watched X-Men 97 and uh, Delicious in Dungeon. And <laughs> Oh, yeah. Delicious in Dungeon. Now you know. You know Senshi now. You know oh, yeah. why everyone the is obsessed. Senshi, the moment Senshi showed up, I was like, this is my guy. <laughs> this is my guy. <laughs> How can you not love an adamantine walk shield? It's so good. God. Yeah. So their food RP immediately. That's how I found about it was the community was like, oh my God, there's a show that is on the level of your food RP. They're like, but it's just a little bit sometimes gross. And I'm like, okay, I'm down <laughs> with that. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, there's Pixel Pete in the chat, too. I love you, Pete. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, yeah, it was great. It's a it's a way for us to also, like, conventions are, it's our own con family, right? So you, you guys are showing up and meeting up with your friends and communities that you only get to see once a year. And it's the same thing for us. So, uh, you know, remember that we're living the same con life, essentially, as you are. It just may be more creators. That's all. Um, and it was lovely. It, it felt like yeah. PAX South. Um, and that was cool because Boston has always felt very gate kept to me where I'm like, hello, I can see you during the convention. And then, sorry, I have to go to all these ticketed parties and I'm probably not going to see you later. I hung out in the lobby. I only went outside once, which was great. And I want to continue to do that. Uh, it, I got to talk to way more people and uh, it wasn't nearly as uh, oppressive of a loud environment to lose my voice. I went out to our spin party once, immediately lost my voice. Done. <laughs> Shot. Look how long it takes for you to lose your voice. I lost mine the first night again. <laughs> but and then there's other people That's like- because I have to yell. I have a softer voice. <sighs> I'm not speaking into the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> I speak a lot lighter than you think. Mm. Sam does have a very soft voice. That did surprise me, but I met not you the for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and then I'll call Eric and he'll be like, oh, Sam, quit yelling. And it's like, yeah. nobody can hear me if I don't yell. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Also, shout out to Pete for saving me with phone charger. Oh, During let's go. Uber escapade. It's a nightmare. Uh, yeah, so it adds about to start, but you guys won't miss anything. It's just going to be the end of announcements. We will pick right back up whenever the, uh, the ad ends to start the episode. So don't worry. Thanks for watching ad. Uh, yeah, so over here this week, we get to play Stormforge. Then after I get done here, I'll hop over on my buddy uh, Ted's channel over at Nerd Immersion, where we're playing Fandelver and Below. And I'll get to do my player character, Bronson Barley, over there. Uh, and then Thursday, the boys are off uh, for Rise of the Black Worm. They have one more episode left, so they're closing out before it heads into springtime. But that'll be uh, the very, I think it's like April 4th, the very beginning of April. Uh, so they're off tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, but I'm going to do something. Uh, and then we do Galadleron on Saturday at 8 p.m. So I will be running from my Easter dinner all the way back over into the stream office. And we will pick up where uh, those folks left off. And as I've been telling people, we will be doing a campaign here on the channel on Thursday evenings for Vecna Eve of Ruin. I have not announced uh, cast folks for that, but that'll be trickling out soon. You're going to see some new folks getting to play D&D for the first time that I have uh, that I have long promised uh, to to get them uh get them some time so i'm very excited we're gonna play that module it starts at level 10 so i kind of feel bad for the new folks they're going to get a lot on their plate all at the same time but it's okay we'll hold hands we'll make it through oh, i love it personally i think level in my maybe because i play too much dnd but in my opinion the fun stuff happens at level 10. I, mm. I agree we start at level six over here so you can multi-class so we're in the same vein all right yeah like yep I like to start as a hero, not as one that has picked up a pitchfork and is like, I'm ready. I'm ready for the fight. Yeah. But I'm going to cough and die. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, no bueno. And we only got to talk. We were, we were about to talk about it pre-show. Uh, I will let you know that whenever Limithron sends their PDFs out, because it's going to be a Kickstarter for the Dark Caribbean campaign setting uh, that they're putting out. I am absolutely going to do that pirate campaign full on inside the dark Caribbean. Don't know when it's going to be, but I'm ready for it. With my character, because I need to play in a pirate campaign. It was such a wasted character. It, it, the campaign was fun. I was in, but it wasn't like pirate or sea based. So I just being a pirate just didn't mean anything, which sucks. So I'm just going to reuse this character the moment I get a chance to. Wouldn't we all? I had a whole campaign in the works. Until next time. <laughs> Maybe an afternoon game at some point in time that everybody could put on their collective channels would be really cool. Wink, wink. Who knows? Mm. Yeah, Who knows? Know. You'll see. Stay tuned. Uh, yeah. 
I believe that is all for this week. If I do a Baldur's Great stream finishing up Act 3, I will announce it in the Discord so you guys can find it over there. And uh, if I end up getting a review copy of Dragon's Dogma, I will show off the bidding part of it. I will not be streaming a bunch of hours of it because I do not have that time, but I will show the game off to the community and play a little bit. And yes, I am very sad that it's not multiplayer because if it was a multiplayer, it looks like it would be the wildest fun on the planet. <laughs> we will see. Oh my, no. Right? Incredible artist. Uh, hold on. Uh, their, their, their Twitter handle, I don't know if they, they, they're still on Twitter because of everything that went down, but their Twitter handle is Frish Abakadu because of the meme and it's yeah. very funny. Uh, <laughs> Drag. Uh, but they're an incredible artist. Damien wants to know your character. You're, it's incredible. That is phenomenal. That's so stuff. good. Oh my God. There's something about the pirate style collar with a snake, snake neck that is undeniable. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh my God. That I is. I saw like art of a Yuanti with like an extended mouth where like you can see like the smile extends a bit further with the fangs. I was like, I need, I need my Yuanti to be like that as well. It's. I have got to know what your rank on the ship was because fuck. Oh, I was the um, first mate. Oh, the the, the whole say. thing was that you... there was like a forbidden love between my character and um the captain you are then... ripping first mate energy in that <laughs> in that thing none of the responsibility all of the <laughs> all of the extra power like oh god it's so good <laughs> oh man that's phenomenal need to pick up where we left off before i drop this quick uh ad from our sponsor What's going on, everybody? Captain Robert and crew here for Stormforged, <laughs> episode 38. I didn't have my cheat to look at. I had to go off my memory. I got um, a... <laughs> it's, it's mayo brain rot. What can I say? <laughs> mayo forge. Mayo forge. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> what people don't know is that in Stormforge, one of the key components of making crafting mm. magical items is mayo. Mm. Um, <laughs> you. I, when we get to Stormforge. What's going on, everybody? Captain Robert and crew here for Stormforged, <laughs> episode 38. I didn't. I mean, yeah, it's cool. I missed the timing. We got the wrong video. I mean, all, all the good stuff. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. But thanks, James RPG Art, for this unbelievably gorgeous background that you see here. Unbelievable stuff. You can get this background and tons of others, some that are super specific to D&D campaigns out there, and other ones that are just general that fit into anything uh, by going over to their Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash James RPG art. Go check it out. We have a link in the, uh, in the description of the episode and I will drop it over here in the chat. I love his stuff so much. Boom. There we go. We need to pick up where we left off. Last week, flying back home to Stormforge proper, finally, after saving the Skyport 
and letting them know of the impending threats from Yancey Bin. You were able to secure a whole new weapon, Callisto. A long rifle from Grumbar Fallen Bridge, the Admiral of the Skyport, convincing him to head back to Stormforge to dock proper. You guys had many conversations along the way, some of which exploring the bardic lore of Kaivar's book. In a moment between Callisto exploring his unknown past. Kaivar was granted access to a secret library of the Vosh Borg. All of this coming to a head, heading back home for those creature comforts. Upon arriving back in Stormforge, Parikh Farouk's Golden Eagle Familiar has led a legion of Aarakocra from the Plain of Air back into the city. Possibly preparing for whatever storm is to come. Now, as I briefed you all last week, there's going to be some downtime before everyone meets back for a dinner at the Amber Forge. You guys want to roll for it? For who goes first? Okay, let's do it. Let's roll for it. All right. Rollies. Lower number goes first. Just flat D20 then. Right? Flat D20. Uh, just as a quick FYI, also check the uh, Stormforge Discord chat, Robert, just so you're aware. Let's see. Sounds good. All right. Oh, poor, poor Ed doesn't have a picture as his character. <laughs> or no, a picture of him. Well, I'll change that now that you've sent me uh. <laughs> Something incredibly clippable. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. That, that will I'm be. Sorry, people should need to pay for that. I'm just saying. <laughs> that, yeah, I agree. Patreon. You get it for free. Patreon. That's OnlyFans. We'll make oh. us talk about OnlyFans. <laughs> I can teach oh, you, but I have to charge. Shrek scenes. Oh, I've said too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna say is Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Shrek is oh. life. Show me oh. the princess. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Lelufia. I it, it, actually, this kind of ties you together. So no matter what your role was, Callisto, you will also be transitioning into the next spot since your downtime is so entwined. I will say purely because of what Sam said in chat, they can't um, unmute right now. It's that bad. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh-huh. <laughs> tell you what, we'll run, we'll run up the numbers uh, we'll, a little bit more. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll go ahead and <clears throat> start with me then. The upper city is transformed overnight, becoming the home away from home of this legion of Arakakra. The upper city quickly becomes its home away from home, Airy. Now where there were the alabaster white buildings bathed in sunlight, there are now these very interesting structures that almost look part scaffolding, part treehouse that have extended even higher into the sky. 
but they aren't connected to the buildings themselves. There are air elementals that are spinning like turbines underneath them. These floating treehouse like structures are the home away from home of this group of Aarakocra. And they have set up shop where divination is the strongest. The firmest believers of the cause. There have been non stop bustle at the top of Stormforge since they have arrived. The mood on the streets right now between the consulate and the rest of the government inside of Stormforge is one of frustration. There have never been a stronger outside presence in Stormforge than there is right now. However, the bourgeoisie don't have any access to it. All early meetings have been transpiring in the top of the city. So the rest of Stormforge is waiting to find out what exactly is going on. We pick back up with Farouk inside of one of the great hearths of Upper City. And whereas he is normally in his full regalia, he just has a bandana on, wrapped up, full on sweat. He's been nonstop baking bread and making food for all of the guests in the arrival, just trying to get the guests that are there as comfortable as possible. They have been sending down as many folks from the upper city as possible into the forgotten lands, literally just to catch fish. It has been a absolute mountain of a cause to feed these un uh, these these incoming guests. But the people there have responded with pride. For once, there is a presence inside the city that trusts and believes in them more than the technology of the city. So it's been with great pride for them to go back into the forgotten lands below, pulling out trout, salmon, and as many different delicious species as possible to bring back to their new guests. They've been in all forms, fried and battered fish, ones wrapped in foil and smoked, others covered in butter and then grilled with lemon and sage. There have been crispy roast potatoes almost the entire week. There seems to be a little bit of homemade tartar sauce on the corner of Farouk's mouth, almost in perpetuity. He kind of steps away from the hearth as he's made the last loaf of sourdough for the day. He cuts himself his own end off to go and butter toast and put a nice slab of beer battered cod over the top of it and grabs some of his homemade tartar sauce dressing, which is a little bit of a combination of actually making like a deviled egg. It's got mustard and honey and a little bit of fine chopped red onion and a jalapeno and relish, this rich paprika and mustardy orange turmeric blend that he slathers over the top of it. And he kind of just sits down and soaks up his hard work. <sighs> and he thinks to himself, I 
think I'm ready for the, uh, those muffins and the Amber Forge. <sighs> oh, I haven't had this much work on my own in some time. I think it's time to see my friends. And he's going to hang up his apron. All right. I'll be back. I need to take the evening off and see some friends. Tell the rest of the area I will be back soon. I'll bring more information after I speak with the others. And there's several of the kids in the upper city kind of all come running over it, uh, over at Fruit, kind of uh, hanging on to him as he's putting the armor on. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Uh, he actually looks over at some of the fresh fruit juice that they've squeezed as they've been like, they've been making fresh uh, pomegranate juice almost the entire week. And he uses a little bit of his magic to turn that juice into little floating globules. All right, go catch. And he sends like 12 of them out just floating over towards the fountain. And uh, the rest of the kids of the upper city all scamper off running, grabbing these things and just... Uh, as if they were on the space station. Kaivar, what have you been up to? Upon Kaivar's return to the Amber Forge, there is a fair degree of merriment and celebration for his small experience of it, predominantly because he walks in arms completely laden with materials of the exotic nature that he had acquired previously. Dragon materials. I, I, I don't know if you're good to pick up on this with me, Drag, but... A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, sitting there and seeing the seeing the pile of everything. Um, yeah, this, this is very much Iftrin's game, too. I think, yeah, I think Iftrin is probably back in the forge, in the back area of the forge. You can hear the clanking of uh, a hammer against, I don't know, I imagine they probably work on a dagger today. Maybe someone came in to have their dagger repaired or have one entirely new forge. And they hear the door open, you hear kind of the ring of the bell as the door opens. And still in the zone, it says, I'll be with you in a moment. And just keeps hammering. Uh, give me one second. Let's see how bad this goes. Okay. Uh, what is... Um, both arms completely full. Kind of trying to balance on spindly legs. What does a 10 get me, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> you, you have fun with it. It can go either way. <laughs> uh, let's, 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 let's flip a coin. Uh, oh, God. Uh, slash R1 DC, I think is the thing, right? Correct. Oh, God. Uh, I will say, we'll say, heads I stay on my feet, tails I'm going to tumble into the table and, and parts will be strewn across it in surprise. <laughs> okay, well, they're all on the table now. Uh, yeah, you hear a loud crash and this sort of very weird um, set of buggy noises because there is, the Vox is, has been put down somewhere else for the moment. Uh, every hand is full. And uh, so just crash and then... <laughs> Just everything falls to the table, loud clatter, several things probably falling on the floor. I don't know if there was anything that had been baked recently in the forge that was on a on a plate that I may potentially not. have fallen. I, I don't know. It's it's Yeah, I think this is in the middle of the day, I'd imagine. So I think they've kind of cleared out. It's a it's a it's an area for customers now rather than a air a home at the moment. Um but the banging of metal stops. And you hear very heavy footsteps, very heavy dwarven footsteps as Ifton rushes out from the back into the front um, room of the forge. What is happening? Kaiva! You can see Kaiva scrambling uh, through the wreckage, um, picks up the Vox, and then just looks up at Ifton very awkwardly. Uh. Hello. Ephraim has is no longer looking at you, is looking at the pile of things that you've brought and just says, Yes, hello. These. Where did you get them and did you bring them for me or did you bring them you brought them for me? 
Oh, uh, 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 yes, no, uh, yes, no, uh, 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 Callisto, and, uh, Lelufia, uh, and Mishkin, uh, and, and, uh, uh, Farouk, uh, Brave Warriors, Kill Dragon, yes. Good uh, gods, okay. Um, and they're gonna rush over to this pile of dragon parts and start eyeing it over. And do you have any uses for these in mind? Um, oh, yes. yeah, these scouts are in perfect condition. Uh, I, uh, I have plans for some bone and scale, but, uh, many parts all can use. Yes, yes. I think, I think I can use all of these these parts what do you have in mind for some of these i can probably start i have okay i have a dagger i'll need to finish the dagger i'm working on they did put in a rush order but after that i can work on whatever it is you have in mind i can put everyone else on wait um who salvaged these this and then they, they'll grab like the bigger one the one that's like a, almost like a play of kevlar and just go this i don't think i've seen any in this perfectly intact without an incredible price tag on it. Oh, yes, uh, work of Farouk. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, go, go. Uh, this one, clever. Uh, uh, clean mess. Yes, yes. Tell me uh, what... I'm itching to work on these. What do you need? What do you want? What ones can I have? Uh, uh... Kaivar is, uh, gonna briefly look through the book and is going to rifle through a page or two, but it opens almost of its own accord. This isn't a solid 15 seconds. It's almost as though the page was mentally bookmarked, and you can see this massive tower shield, but it's not something that immediately would be within Iftran's domain. It's something that clearly uses bone and scale, but it's far more biological in nature than if Trin might be used to crafting. Uh, this, uh, uh, this, this for cover, yes? Uh, but, but, uh, 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 everything else, yes? Uh, is for everyone else, yes, yes? Uh, okay. I will, okay. I, I will, uh, oh, strange, uh, way to make, but, uh, I know how, so, uh, yes, yes. Kaiva's just going to very briefly sort of set aside one of the larger scales, not the Kevlar plates, but the scales and some of the bone. But even from the small portion of material that's been pulled away from the rest, you can tell that this thing is built way bigger than Kaiva. Like, this, this would easily be like a seven or eight foot tall tower shield if it's done to proper specification. No yeah. clear idea of what this little weird bug is going to do to make this functional work, but clearly there is something. Oh. If kind of looks, has their arms folded, looking at the pile and then at the kind of schematic, the image you have in your book, I... Hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems a lot more living, right? Oh. Uh, yes, yes, is, um, mm, uh, his gift, his tool, uh, mm, uh, I find it hard to explain, yes, yes, but, uh, one day you shall know, uh, is good, yes, yes, ooh, ah, uh, mm, one, 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 one more thing, yes, 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 uh, and going to very quickly grab that breath pouch, uh, Callisto said this was, uh, for a new weapon. Yes, yes, for him. Yes, yes. If, if in size, <laughs> just tell me that himself to send a messenger, can't visit his own mom, and it would take, take the, the gland and kind of gander once over, over it and go, yeah, I suppose I can work with this. I can do something with this, I think. I'm definitely no amateur when it comes to working with once living parts, but and then it will point to your book. I don't know how close I can get to that. Like I said, this seems like it is 
living, I don't think I can make it living again with the parts we have. Oh, oh, oh. with really, really my expertise. Uh, uh, when, uh, when I have, uh, finished, uh, I can try and show you how, yes, yes, is, uh, it is not my craft, not, uh, master like you, but, uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you teach me, uh, forge? Yes, yes. A huge smile spreads on Ifjan's face when you say that, and they, they, without even saying a word, they'll rush back into the forge proper, and then rush back out, you see they have, like, a blacksmith's apron, and just immediately, like, just, they have, they're short, but they have ridiculous hops. They jump up and put the apron on you, <laughs> without asking you to bend down, nothing just puts the apron on you, lands, and goes, okay, make sure you tie that up. I don't think I have any gloves that would really work for your hands, but we'll work with what we have. Um, come on, come, 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 and start, immediately start ushering you into the back of the forge. Uh, yeah, instant, instantly follows, uh, takes maybe like a few of the scales and bones that he'd set aside specifically, and just before heading to the forge, tucks them away into his formerly assigned crate, um, the cupboard that uh, he has come to live within. Yeah, I think... I don't know, what do I roll for this? Because I think I will be looking at the, the first the breath gland, but also the pieces of scale and bone to see what Ifrin can do, what if, if Ifrin can make this shield. For context, from the previous time, uh, just in case we needed it, I, I listed down everything that you uh, had said as far as parts, Robert. So like, I, I have the inventory, so to speak. I can go ahead and post what I had in my thing. What's the um, first thing that she's going to evaluate? And she's evaluating it for a shield, correct? Is that what you just said? Yes, I think to be more excited with the shield first. All right, what piece is she looking at? The uh, plates? Um, I think Vi said the, it was like the, not the plates, but like the, the almost just like... The, just the scales, yeah, just the, the scales. The scales, like this, almost like sheets of scales rather than the thick, big one. Okay, in this case, I would say that they have a particular probably well-known knowledge of dealing with dragon scales i don't think it's something yeah. you do every month but i bet they've been working with it for a long time so first oh, i want to think it's rare but i definitely have worked with it yeah yeah let's go ahead and make a survival check uh with advantage and let's go ahead and give them a uh, expertise on this and I would say that they would probably be sitting around a plus 13 on this okay uh, is that advantage specifically from Iftrin or is that half and half between Kaivar and Iftrin this is Iftrin this is thinking about in context of the dragon scales and the implementation for what you want hmm. uh, I have I'm just going to roll it twice because I have no idea how it's actually Oh yeah, it's a it's a KH keep highest. Okay, KH, okay. We need to make a little mini NPC cards for them. Mm. I'm just gonna roll it twice. <laughs> Twenty-four. Mm. 27. Perfect. Damn. Perfect. So we're aligning them to the same uh, DC that it took to harvest, which was a 20. So they instantly have a comfortability with the cloud dragon scales that you have. Uh, I would imagine that they haven't seen a cloud dragon scales in quite some time, but they have worked with them before. That makes sense. Yeah. Everything else on this shield will be a forging roll from them. And that'll be a plus 15. So you are looking to make a dragon scale shield. All right. Okay. This will be a, uh, a, a plus two to AC shield that will grant thunder resistance. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. It yeah. will also have the property 
of once per dawn being able to reflect either force damage, lightning, or thunder as a reverberation. Holy shit. Okay. See if there's anything I can do to make sure this roll is better. The, um, this will be a three part DC. Oh, fuck. Okay. The, um. it is not, it is not pass. The first one is pass fail for the creation. You'll get a two AC shield with resistance. Each step you go further, the stronger the shield gets. Okay. Uh, Kaivar is going to walk up next to Iftrin with the schematic uh, page open. Uh, thematically, I'm going to use that as a way of uh, saying I cast guidance on every step of this, so you get that bonus 1d4. Um, Kaivar is going to also offer out one of his larger hands momentarily. Uh, uh, this is... Uh, this will be strange, yes, yes, but I can show you uh, how I, I will uh, change uh, this when it is made. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, I'm not entirely sure what you mean, but sure. Uh, uh, take my hand. No hesitation, immediately grabs your hand. Okay. Uh, context, even with the hand being taken, this is a mind link situation. Uh, does Ifter and consent? They, I think, they can Ooh. sense so quickly that you're kind of like, how did they even know that was going to happen? <laughs> mm -hmm. They they allow it. Okay, and for context, uh, I will also, seeing as they've accepted uh, after this RP, I will also say that uh, we're dropping a use of Bardic Inspiration, so at any point in the three-part skills, uh, you got an extra 1d8 to use on one of these. Um, Ooh, okay. Yeah. Uh, others within the group would know well what this looks like. This is the first time for Iftrin uh, appearing on that flat plane with Kaivar. Um, but there is a strange process that's taking place before them. There is some kind of cocoon, a growth, appearing before both Iftrin and Kaivar. And it's a very strange, but almost sacred process, something that seems very weird, especially for a being that seems honestly, at times dispassionate like Kaivar, where most of his quirks come from curiosity or fear, and not from reverence in the same way that most things are built. There's only one or two times that that can ever be displayed. And uh, those instances have now evaporated, now that he is separated from the heart of his former colony. But in this process, Iftrin can see the finished result of the shield, and it is being gingerly placed in the orbit of several other objects. There is a great amount of woven psychic thread binding this cocoon together, and there is also something else at the heart. There is a book. You notice as Kaivar draws forward, that the shield, for one moment, animates, and there is almost a spectral figure, much larger than Kaivar himself, but the demonstration of where the shield might normally be held and how it's incorporated is shown off. It is this massive, seven or eight foot tall tower shield that is tall enough to guard anyone that Iftrin has seen within the group. And it's one of only four appendages, as is the nature of Kaivar's people. But again, it seems unbelievably strange for this small little bug to be wielding something so utterly massive. Seeing the implementation, where it would actually be placed, how it would be implemented, the vision momentarily fades and they are back in the Amber Forge. I think a uh, thing you notice that is that Iftrin wasn't phased at all at being brought to this space, this plane, or seeing this space. Um, almost immediately as they see 
as they realize what you're showing them, they almost seem to very similar to when Callista, you brought Callista to that space. Um, they seem to circle around this shield being created, being grown, um, trying to see and figure out. We can only assume is how it works and how they can mimic it um, artificially. Um, and then, yes, as the vision phase, they look up at you and just very casually go, I don't know if I can make it that large. Uh, yes, yes, but, uh, where you begin, I can follow, I can finish, yes. Okay. Okay. What, uh, start small, like, uh, uh, uh. Like me, uh, will grow, yes. I'll see what I can do. I got, I got a good view of some of the joints and bending points. I'm going to see if I can mimic that. Um, we don't have as much material as we might need, but I have some spare metal and um, materials from other commissions that weren't completely used up. They can probably use to fill up the gaps and missing, missing parts. Um... I don't have goggles that will protect your eyes. So that might just be a danger you might need to keep an eye out for. Oh. And don't literally have an eye out. Uh, uh, I can try. And uh, Kaivar is going to weave a little bit of the psychic thread and create a very thin veil over his eyes. Literally, almost like the sort of secondary eyelid that you would see on a lizard except it is very much clearly created from this mucousy membrane of psychic thread. You've realized Good enough. That, you've, you've realized <laughs> that if this is this is about as close as it gets to glasses for Kaivar, he looks a maximum yeah. <laughs> nerdish right now. It's fantastic. I just need to see, verbally say that any injuries that might occur are not my fault and you will not sue. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I will not sue. Who Perfect. Is okay. Sue? Oh, even better. Okay. <laughs> and they'll, they'll get to work on on the shield. I'll ro make the first roll. Okay. Because uh, Ifrin is a expert blacksmith, these rolls will be made at advantage. If you roll a twenty. The process is an auto success immediately, and you will receive all max benefits of the creation. If you roll double yeah. ones, the project will fail, and the dragon scales will be lost. Okay. Okay, so you said it's uh, keep higher. Where do I put the KH? Is it like at the end of the D20? Like the end D20? of the D20. Mm -hmm. Okay. Twenty-eight. Good lord. Woo. Twenty-eight succeeds well. on the first check. Okay. Oh, why am I I'm nervous? Okay. Okay. The second roll. The same thing. Same thing. The Ooh. plus two shield has been forged. Uh, as an FYI, if ever, I don't know what the checks are, but if ever it does end up being low, but not ones, again, you got that extra 1d8 from uh, Bardic Inspire. Yeah. Um, what's, do I know what a second DC is? You don't? Oh, I don't? Oh, crap. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. That's 19 and a solid. 2. 38. Oh. Okay. Forging okay. this shield again, seeing it all come together, Kaivar, this absolute expert craftsmanship displayed before you. You're beginning to see what most folks never quite get a glimpse of, how the sausage is made. Literal magical properties being forged 
by someone's hands. There's this little bit of an aura that is around that shield where you can, you can feel it. It's almost magnetic. Where it kind of positive, negatively charges you back as this thing is being forged. It's everything that you ever hoped you would see with the creation of a magic item. I think it's almost maybe even eerie or comforting how natural it seems to come to Ifdren. And I, I will also say, I think you probably might even notice how similar it is to the almost innate talent for cooking that you know Kilthed has, and even Farouk, of how while well, others might need to put, set a timer or actually have a countdown, they seem to know exactly when to pull the metal out from the fire. They seem to know exactly what angle to hammer the metal or shave and carve the bone into. All from just seeing an image in your book and then later on getting to see for a moment what it looks like in person in that vision. Um, it's very much, again, all, also very much like how people can listen to a note and know exactly what key it is. Just from a quick glance, you can see Ifjur knows exactly what to do and build. With a 38 um, on the last roll, I will reveal that the final DC is 28. It has been a 24, 26, 28 challenge. Okay. So you will know where the final destination point is. Okay. Okay. And I still got a 1d8 yep. from Bardic. From so we, so we got this, we got this, okay. Easy peasy. Yes. Not even phase. <laughs> so, the first DC crafted the shield itself at a plus two. The second DC added the property of refraction and resistance, but the refraction was only half of the damage done. With the third check complete, you can refract or reflect the entire damage from one force, thunder, or lightning attack. Got it all. How long would it have taken? With an expert, that would have been the, uh, you had the materials already. So it would have been a forging pretty much of the afternoon. Like it's, it's ready because of its mat, because it's magical. It doesn't take the time, uh, to have to set and settle. Like these dragon scales are already what they are. It's yeah. just the binding of modern materials and those scales. So it will be able to use today. You see, they kind of slam down the hammer one last time. And I think, especially you being a magical, or I guess psychic, but I think you still feel it. The kind of almost like closing of a circuit, the completion of the the artifact as um, almost as if each hammer strike was adding a new rune to it. You don't see any runes, you don't see any symbols being shaped, carved into it, but it's almost like the actual rhythm and power behind each strike of the hammer is a rune in itself. And you see that final one being set into place and if Jun lifts up the goggles from the eyes hands on their hips very proud and goes i think that's the personal best what do you think and i'll turn over and turn to look at kaiwa uh wide wide buggy eyes uh looking at this looking at all the intricate detail the delicate and yet also sure hammer strokes that have forged this item of power incredibly clear to see just sort of picks it up momentarily and then ah, 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 
uh, drops it because uh, it is still hot from the forge. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, okay. okay. Oh. You weren't wearing your gloves, okay. I, um, um, I, uh, I am not a master like you, yes, yes, but uh, I have learned much, I think, yes. Uh, Iftrin? Uh, uh. Well, I am looking for an apprentice, so if you ever want to stop by and maybe shadow me, I'll be happy to teach you. Oh. Thank you. Yes. yes. Of course. I asked Callista, but he's always busy. You know, you know, you know him, you know wardens. Uh, yeah, you will. In, I mean, at this moment in time, Kaivar is completely enraptured, not just with the item made, but the process. The clear expertise on show, augmented by a powerful torrent of magic behind something of a subtler nature built into this craft, something that, much like psychic energy, Kaivar can appreciate. Uh, absolutely, we'll sit there and admire the shield. Once it has cooled, we'll go ahead and grab it, and we'll gently place it next to his crate. Uh... Iftrin? Yes. Uh, I, I kept this safe. And Kaivar is going to, from between the folds of the pages of the book, almost enveloping it like a warm hug, he's going to go ahead and pull out the large blanket, which seems to fold out of the book, almost like it's folding out of an extra dimensional space. Uh, I think you have given me two gifts now. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would uh, be honored to be uh, your apprentice for some time. Yes, yes. Well, first I'll say that gift was all from my wife. So I think you should tell her that she'll be very happy that you kept that safe. Oh, well, uh, yes, yes. And secondly, yes, whenever you'd like. I know you're very busy being around with Lulufia and Kalissa. I know they're dragging you all over the place. But when you have a moment to rest, when they're kind enough to give you a moment to rest, come over. Uh, yes, I sh shall do. Yes, yes. Uh, and I shall bring a gift to uh, say uh, thank you. Uh, to your uh, family. Yes, yes. Oh. Speaking of gifts, <gasps> has Galissa told you that it's Ziva's Ziva. going to be Ziva's yes. birthday? Yes. Oh, Ziva's yes. birthday. Yes. Yes, yes. He has given you the invite, right? Uh. Of course he has it. Well, you're invited. You're invited to the party. Let the others know they're invited as well. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I know how to make a uh, excellent gift. Uh, yes, yes. Don't, you, I'll you be honest, see, I'll, I'm very curious, but I'm very bad at keeping secrets, so don't tell me. You see the keenest of nods on Kaivar's face. He's been hit by inspiration, and you're not sure whether that's a really good thing or a really <laughs> bad thing. I think if should, anytime anyone has an idea, if just like, great. It's a great idea. As far as I'm concerned, any idea is a good idea. Uh, oh, so they oh. love that you seem to be, <laughs> you have an idea. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the light bulb has very much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the light bulb has very much gone off on in Kaivar's head. You're just uh, waiting to figure out if this is uh, um, Turing at Bletchley Park or if this is the Looney Tunes. You know, <laughs> you you will see. Um, and they'd be like, okay, I guess I have to go and work on Callistos. Can't even say hello after coming back from the adventure. It's a big boy now with a warden, and he'll go up and he'll grab, grab the the dragon uh, breath gland, and figure out what I can make of it. I actually don't know what Calista would want from it. Um, you have to do some research. Yeah, I think I think because Calista is so was so vague with it, and I think this is a very mother thing to do. She's gonna make what she can with it, and if Calista complains. She will, she will. Oh, um, <laughs> that is 
so parental. <laughs> you used the gl the dragon gland, mom? What? Of, <laughs> well, of course I did. I oh my. <laughs> So yeah, she's gonna figure out what she can do and make it, and then if Kalista complains about what it ends up being, he can do with it. Um, and this is gonna be me quickly <laughs> thinking of ideas of what it could be. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever been more triggered in RP than right now. This is, oh my God. I My parents come back from Florida on Saturday, and I'm already triggered about where things are in the house that may end up on the burn pile, uh, like my acoustic foam. Why? Why is a good <laughs> question. Uh, <laughs> I think I think I know what I'll make of actually. Um, I think if if this is cool, um, I like to make like almost an extension to a pistol, almost like a silencer, but instead of it um, silencing any gunshots, I think it's like almost like very much like how you like dip an arrowhead in poison. It's just a thing that as you fire or um not retroactively, but like as it exits the barrel of the gun, it'll coat the bullet in. Um well, this is a thunder gland, so it's not anything physical. Um hmm. Okay, so I've never made one of these before either. Uh yeah. A dragon's wrath weapon. The weapon is decorated oh. with uh for parts it absorbs the energy of the dragon's breath weapon and deals damage of that type oh i think i already have thunder bullets do i actually i don't think actually do hold on but see this if you made a separate gun this would be in addition to the bullets oh okay this would Ooh. this would stack that this would be this would look like where alchemists are able to continue to stack more elemental uh, onto their arrow so they can fire a fire arrow and then attach a potion or a bomb to the arrow and send it out. I, okay, I have an idea and you can say no to this, but I think I have an idea and I think I have a reason why um, Ifjin would want this. Um, I think Ifjin already knows that Callisto has two clan pistols and they're very important to the family. Um, and I don't think she'd want to make anything to replace a clan pistol because of that. Can she enhance and adapt a cl the clan pistol instead? Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay, perfect. So I think at some point when Callisto does come back home <laughs> um, in a very passive aggressive manner She'll just say, Callisto, give me your gun. The can pistol, give me the can pistol. And Callisto, like, um, yeah, hi, mom, here you go. Is there something wrong with it? She'll just grab the gun and walk into the forge without saying anything. And just be like, did I, did I do something? <laughs> and as he walked into the kitchen, um, I think Itchin will work on the can pistol. Um, to try and enhance the clan pistol and infuse it with this magic of the breath weapon gland. Let's go. I am ready. I am ready for these checks. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm just recording over here on my own notes. We have given uh, Iftrin a plus what for uh, the expertise in uh, blacksmithing? Plus 15. Plus 15. 15. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is Kaivar still in the picture at this point? Um, I mean, I guess because you kind of you don't have anywhere else to go unless you're sleeping yeah, with Farouk. So I imagine this would be like either later on in the day or the next day. Well, I mean, you know, not sleeping at Farouk's place, maybe sleeping with Farouk. I don't know. We got here, Mexico. Oh, really? Wow. Oh, Romance okay. is in the air, baby. I don't know. It's not. Sleeping been, with it, Farouk. It's oh not been God. announced. You know, the hammocks are an interesting experience for It's all the hands and the tusks. Like, there's just a thing going on. A lot of things being tied oh. up on that particular side. Well, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting so for tonight. Do you think you'd be. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, jokes aside, um, yeah, no. Kaivar is absolutely sleeping in the crate for the most part. Okay. Uh, if he had given the uh he's sat there and been like hey uh can i can i i will happily be apprentice um yeah. 
yeah, uh, will also observe and will sit there and attempt to uh, assist, which thematically is me saying, take, keep the guidance, keep the 1d4. <laughs> yeah, I, will, I do think, I think probably the guidance is probably the only way they'll take your help. Because I think especially with clan mm -hmm. pistols, because of how much it means to a Dolphin family, it'll be like, I want to handle this. Yeah, this is um, a learning experience for yeah. Kaival. This is not a... But there is very little to teach. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, sub note about your shield that was just created. It yes. does not Ooh. fall under your regular attunement. Mm. This falls oh. under a special form of attunement that is in addition to what you already have. This is of Ifrin's specific build and quality. So the people of her clan are already attuned to this. So Iftrin is attuned to this shield. Ooh. Whoever is in her family unit is attuned to this shield. Oh, and as well I, as you are attuned to the shield, Gavar. I can't even start to express how absolutely bloody perfect that is. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm shut the hell up. So no more. Yeah. yeah I, so I will say, at, at one point in the process, now that you describe that robot, I think one point in the process, and I think this is a thing that Irshin does a lot with, like, if you, it's like definitely a thing you pay extra for if you could like ask Irshin to make something for you. But you're 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 a friend of uh, their their son, so it's free for you. But they'll have you like just one stroke of they'll let you strike the hammer once and i think that's the attuning of it being like here you go almost oh. like giving you, um, permission to be attuned to this and they do this for other customers if they pay extra it's probably like an, an extra 500 gold or something like that but um but they it's they, like um, tapping they, the keg at oktoberfest let's go yeah <laughs> so we're gonna take a quick ad break and stretch right here we'll be right back for everybody I am going to grab nice. a Kofefe while this ad runs. Thanks, folks, for watching ads. You won't miss a thing. Yeah. I love oh, yeah. I love Ifjorn. I, oh, I, oh, my gosh. I love blacksmiths and, like, artificers so much. I think they're I, so much fun to play. I need you to understand, Rek. You have no idea the monster you've helped create. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> it's going to be so stupid. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. You yeah, all's I world think... building is what creates the stakes for things that could happen in the city. Like I am worried in my own mind about like, you know, generators <laughs> failing and like, uh, you know, like, like real world stuff, like invasions happening over here. Like I care about the neighborhood. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there's like, st like storm forge three, like the amber forge is like, it's destroyed. And it's like, I, we will kill uh -oh. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> It's our vengeance arc. We're like, <laughs> you've taken everything from us. I find it so funny. I definitely made the family like as a, this is a fun vote. This is the next thing in Killison's backstory. And then they became just standard NPCs that we continuously go to now. Can you, uh, can you identify the subject for us? Mom, do you know what this is? Mom. Oh my God. Her just yeah. running with it. Oh. What do you mean you use my cl the cloud dragon gra gland already? Well, I had an idea, honey, and you know. And do you uh, want specific? So I did what you, I could. Okay. You weren't specific. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm fucking dead. I'm I dead. Can't read your mind. To tell oh, you what you want. But you didn't, so I did what I could. Oh <laughs> my god, Drake, we, you're on okay, fire! Like, it starts as oh. this really beautiful, like, very nice, cohesive family unit, and it just turns out there's just this simmering passive aggression underneath all of it. It's like, wait, you should have just told me what you wanted, shouldn't you, honey? Anyway, oh it's god. fine, it's okay. <laughs> Ooh, all I the think just like, around the table. Like, on a break? <laughs> yeah, we're on a, we're on an ad break. Yeah, we're on a momentary oh. ad break. Okay, also, I don't know if any of this makes sense to y'all, Except for Robear, so I gotta wait till he's back. But uh, but I figured out what the person or what the people are trying to sell. It's fucking Kirby. Kirby vacuums. What? <laughs> I was yeah, like, so I was like, why is it so creature? loud? <laughs> like I couldn't tell if it was a vacuum because they kept turning it on and off. And so I went out there because my brother was like, "Sam, I need you in here." Huh. I didn't believe. 
I get it, they're pretty <laughs> girls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love I was thinking about, I, I almost played an artificer for this campaign, but I'm gonna say yeah. I mean you did. Classic I mean kinda <laughs> did, yeah. But like I was a D I'll be honest, D and D artificers kinda suck. I'm gonna be honest. It is not great. Um they're really not built great for what they're the, the flavor of it and mm -hmm. artificer Word. in pathfinder just way too complicated for me to figure out like live on stream um but yeah i thought about i thought about it a lot i played a whole like third party artificer in a campaign that i was in and it was so much more fulfilling and it had me thinking so much about magic and craft and how they interlink and interweave and i don't know i like the idea of like literally i think in that moment kaiba noticed that literally none of the magical items that um if Jen forges has any like runes on it any like clear runes or markings that should be magical and i just like the idea of it being the actual strokes and strikes of the hammer that she is, is magic yeah. yeah like she can't cast a spell at all like i don't if you were like cast presentation she wouldn't know what that even is um but <laughs> but somehow the the actual strikes of the hammer is magical with intention behind it. I kind of mm. I just really like that. Innate magic. Like Real the part quick, of, yeah, yeah, like who they are. Stormforge yeah. chat. Is it amber heart like this, or is it one word completely, or is it two words? One word. One, one word. word completely. Cool. Oh, okay. Um, so amber heart is the name. The amber forge is the name of the. Mm. So amber heart is our surname. The amber forge is the name of the forge. Oh, okay. Cool. That's the name that I married into. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because fun fact, sylphs don't have last names. Hmm. But they can adapt them depending on things that occur in life. Hmm. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of lore that I read up on on this because we wanted to make sure that it made sense for our characters. Yeah. It doesn't matter anymore because, you know, my race really doesn't <laughs> exist in any of you. Hey, you also, Suli, so my, the race I was, was a Suli and they also don't have yeah. surnames. Like, what does it have you under now in Eric Danasi? And I'm just like, that's not what I am at all, but okay. Yeah, it's the closest. <laughs> Yeah. Like mine is a, hu I'm a human, and that's not at all mm -hmm. why I am, um, like story wise. It's like the most, I guess, accurate-ish base stats. Yeah. You get. I mean, Ed's doesn't exist either. Well, yeah. To uh, I mean, I don't think it, it really existed in the game path either. You can't what play a. What? Are you right? Charles is dead, but you can't play one. To paraphrase yeah. Sam Reich, I was a tiefling the whole the time. The whole time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> tiefling is the yeah. <laughs> Um, because I missed it. Where did we just leave off? Oh, we just Was left it... off um, finishing the shields, and then okay. I did a little mini roleplay of me, of um, Ifjan snatching the gun away from Kalissa to infuse that. Yeah, I, with, I saw uh, that as soon as I, I left. Yeah. So that's, she was that's Mama in, done. and I'm like, yes, we love Mamas up in here. <laughs> that's all mama. we've done. We haven't even done the roll for it yet, so... Oh, are we're, you about to do that, or are we moving Yeah, on? we're going to be doing Where that. Where are y'all in the, the timeline of our two weeks? Um, I think because we're just peppering a... Oh, with this scene specifically? Yeah, because Michigan say, and Lolly will be doing something probably during the same time. Yeah, I'd uh, say probably... Stuff too. I'd, say, I'd say same day, like the day we arrived, this is happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'd say the next day. I think... Do you think the day we arrived? Yeah, because you, you just brought in the, the material. Yeah, so the day we arrived, Sick. we're just nearing the end of that day. 100%. Yeah. Oh, then ours won't be that same day. <laughs> Need, like some sleep and some break. Yeah. <laughs> that was way too soon to do anything other than rest. We'll do it a week out from the birthday. I'm so excited. Oh, wait, I have to roleplay Ziva. Hang on. <laughs> Let me figure out my voice. Yeah, I'm not the only one who has to roleplay multiple <laughs> Just, characters here. <laughs> hang on. This is why all my NPCs I don't mind it, dead. but... <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're like, I don't have to DM this one. <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't think I would have to DM this one either. Usually, in literally Robert every usually game I've ever them. played in. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually yeah. the so first time I've ever seen Robert make us roleplay the NPCs, which I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm actually really Whenever he told you to do it, I was like, oh, wait. I was also, very, I'll be honest, I was very nervous when it happened at first, but I kind of like it now. I will say, Ed, on a terrifying note, just because they're dead doesn't mean you're not going to RP them. Well, true. Very true. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome to Robes games. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be right back. The amount of times uh, I had to talk to my dead sister. I feel very, I feel very lucky that I got away with literally doing like one bit of RP as, uh, as my twin. And then the other tiny bit was literally just them laughing at Xanrin being bad at learning shit. It was so good. 
It was always fun. Yeah, yeah I liked how Robert, <laughs> because I didn't role play as uh, Biddy's twin. Robert did. And it was funny because he's always trying to emulate my voice. And I'm like, good job, buddy. You're like getting there. It's a little bit higher, like 10 more octaves maybe, but you're doing great. <laughs> it was so sweet though. <laughs> he always did it so right. Mm. We're complimenting you right now, Robert. That's, That's right, Van so booby. <laughs> Actually, Robert, question for you. Because this is an experience for several of us for the first time ever. What made you want us to roleplay our NPCs? Outside of the way they, uh, we've done it with you in previous campaigns. Uh, most There's of no the time- wrong answer. Most <laughs> of the time, I've done this. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess we just, it was just for us and maybe some there. some I do and where it's where it's more your story to tell mm -hmm. and it's the comfort level like you guys are all okay. like I don't have to worry about putting you on the spot because I know that you're able to, like you're comfortable or at least you make it look like you're very comfortable in creating uh parts <laughs> of your own story so it's all about like you know who can do more of it like when i'm at the mods game i'm gonna do 90 percent of the, the hard lifting unless they've come with me with something that's there versus you all that are incredibly incredibly talented and do this as a as a Aww. as a day job so it's like it's easy i know you're gonna come up with something uh, uh you know exponentially more exciting than i am because you have that vision in your in your zeitgeist there ready yeah, I think also Meteor Encore, since we, that was not supposed to be anything other than three episodes. It was like a, <laughs> let's make it up as we go. And then you find out I always make it up as I go. That's why it's, well, yeah. uh, it's yeah, not my baby. <laughs> it's our Frankenstein. Like, I don't derive any joy happens. from sitting down and having to write the entire lore of a city all my own. I want to go and explore that city with you all, and I get to experience it. Robert, you'll understand this. <laughs> I was telling them earlier, I found out who the salesmen are and why it's like on and off very loud noise. It's it's Kirby vacuum salesman. <laughs> My brother let them in, which is the worst thing you could do. They'll never leave. This is his fault. Yes. As soon as soon as I heard my brother answer the door, I was like, no, don't do it, brother. Don't do it. And they're two <sighs> beautiful women, so I'm just like All right. <laughs> I I especially around this time, uh you know, around uh Spring cleaning. Uh, well uh, <laughs> the resurrection. Let me tell you about the pamphlets I have in middle America right now on my door. So many so many white perma mullet Jesuses on pamphlets. <laughs> perma mullet? Dude, the I'll southern you, Jesus. you know what it's like, like Jesus. the deep southern Jesus look of these old pamphlets. Oh, like man. it's curly white man. It looks like the front of like a 1970s like country music album. Like it's like <laughs> Fabio on the front of every romance novel. Hundred percent. Yep. Yep. Like that. That like that blurry, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> radiant look. <laughs> NASCAR Jesus. I know who that Jesus. Yes. Is. 100% NASCAR that. Jesus. That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> By the way, I hate, I hate my, I hate my office sure, so um, much. Actual world building that I can't just made up and I actually never brought up. Um, so Amber Heart is actually so I made this up and I didn't even run this by you, but I, I personally really like this idea that sometimes in Dwarven culture when they don't can't decide on or don't want to take the other's name they actually combine names so amber high is oh. actually a combination of the surname um v um violet oakenheart and if Jen amber brew and they combine it to make amber heart oh. when they got married That's so cute that is so cute love that oh. i love your moms <laughs> so we have an impending clan pistol creation. Yes. But we need to pick up with probably, it looks like Lolly. Oh, yeah. If the vacuums are silenced. They're on and off. They're not at my door right now, though. I can hear them, but I don't think y'all should be able to. 
real quick. We can't hear it. This. How does the Amber Heart Bulwark sound as a name? Oh, I do like that. There you go. The Amber Heart Bulwark. Yeah. I've been I was making the item thing in the background while all this is going on. <laughs> I, I already so created it. But... <laughs> hey, never mind. It's cool. All right. <laughs> hey, but yeah. Cool because my shit. Well, fudge me, I guess. <laughs> you you were totally <laughs> pleased to name it the Amber Heart Bulwark. Uh, mechanically, oh, yeah, it was. it's a two plus Absolutely. shield with just writing on it, so it's not like I uh. <laughs> I've been crafting this. It's forged like the shield in RP. Anyway, I'm sorry. Shut the hell up. Go ahead. We good? Sweet. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Uh, upon arrival, she would not be doing anything other than going straight to her home, seeing her family and going to sleep. I assume it's probably not going to be a very long day after that, but very soon after the following days, uh, she would want to get work done, like get it out of the way. They have a lot to tell to fellow wardens to report um, in regards to Yancy Ben and what the Aarakocra are doing there as well. So if we wanted to, Lisa, would you like to do it? do a bit yeah. with Lolly. Okay, cool. I would say as soon as the, the sun rises the next morning, it's not even a, a moment of waiting for, for breakfast or the town to wake up. She would already be rustling about the room and getting herself all put together after she's she probably spent some time fixing up her cloak again. And um, how long would it take you to get up? Like, would you I think, be disturbed I think or...? I think it'd be up maybe just barely a few minutes after you're up. I think they also are fully aware of the kind of responsibilities they have right now. But I do think that's they're like kind of bustling around the room, getting ready. They are kind of talking to you going like, did I say something to mom? She was like really, like really Why? rude. Like not rude, but like, you know, just got to my gun and then left. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I was like, as you hop, <laughs> hopping into his, into his pants. <laughs> She's just like putting on her her outfit as well and readjusting. I don't think you did anything wrong. It looked like she was excited like... about something. Did you even try to ask her? Or did you just go no, to just... bed? I, I was exhausted. I went straight to bed. I probably shouldn't go to bed when someone's angry, but I was I was tired. I don't think she was angry. Unless I've never seen your, either of them actually, angry with a smile on their faces. If Jen, sometimes it's honestly scarier when she's still I've smiling. Never seen that. What have you done? Tell me a story. She oh, says, she's like now uh, putting her hair back and <laughs> almost ready to go. Let's go like, you know how I always told you to put a safety on when we were practicing on the ship? <laughs> and that has just be the beginning of the story as we head, head out. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I think it would be before anybody in the home is awake as well, because yeah. we know it's going to be a long day. Could be a long couple of days of back and forth paperwork and meetings and whatever else we need to do to get things fully done. But... We would be walking toward the warden hall. Uh, how do you want to go about talking about this? Yeah, no, good. What, what are we? What are we saying? I think first things first. We definitely need to tell them about Yancey Ben, especially since we told the port to dock with um, Stormforge. At least some explanation from the warden that they're going to cite. Probably be a good idea. Um, Fair. I think we probably need to know a bit more about what's going on with the Aries. Uh, I assume they're here to help, but I think we might need to speak to them for specifics of what they want from us and what we might need from them, and then relay that to the wardens as well. Okay. Uh, Robert, did we see where they, like, stationed themselves up, or was it just all kind of across? Y yeah, you course? know the Aries is in the top of the city. It's very visible that all of their floating of kind of treehouse airships are all up there. Oh, that's cool. 
they're, they're, they're meant to be, <laughs> yeah, they're meant to be like, if you like put together a bird cage and a tree house <laughs> together. It's like a cat tree for birds. Okay. <laughs> totally. Cause it's layered. It's very, ver it's very vertical. If you were to, if you were to stumble upon this particular Aries, uh, tribe in the, uh, in the, the, the plane of air, it would be these giant floating singular towers. Everything is vertical like a bird cage that goes up. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, if they haven't already noticed everything. Yeah. Then I, I guess we should let them know soon. Yeah, I don't think they haven't noticed. I think it's more of just a case of having no idea why. Fair. Did you bring any paperwork? I didn't, I realized I didn't do any paperwork. I think they should have the paperwork we need. We should need to fill in debriefings and probably try and get a meeting with some of the wardens to speak to them face to face. Yeah, there's, there's some wardens I don't want to talk to. I can do the talk. She's recollecting the last time she went to Warden Lodge. Yeah. All right, well. Let's do this. It's probably leading up to this building. Um, I assume wardens, their days start earlier than most people. They've got a lot to get through, briefs if they need to, or um, they don't get to see each other all the time because they're in and out and doing their own things. So they would walk up to the warden lodge. Go through the door. Who's awake? Yeah, who's at a desk? Who do we who see? Speak to? Go ahead and make a roll for me or my warden chart. Uh, it is a D12. Just a D12. Both of us or one of us? Uh, either one of you. I'll do it. Just a D12? Mm hmm. An eight. There is a halfling behind the desk that is an apprentice of Kel Thuds. Their name is Ian Cuddlescar. I will drop this. I love that last name. Cuddlescar. And it's like cuddle fit, like cuddlefish. The cutest, hard ass name. <laughs> I misheard that as cuddle scar. Yeah, I so cuddle as well. Yes, that's the entire point. Oh, it is. is people oh, always God. think that it's cuddle, but it is cuddle. Oh, so oh, his no. Ian's nickname is Cuddles. Oh my God. So I'm, I'm assuming really we kid. know them absolutely. Yes, you <laughs> know anything a part of Pilthud. He is about halfway through his warden's apprenticeship currently. Okay. Uh, he, he's the one that he's kind of, he's kind of Kel Thud's right hand man at the moment because he can depend on him whenever he leaves, but he's also the yeah. one that he rides the hardest. This is oh. probably his yeah. favorite pupil in some time. Uh, and he actively volunteers for whenever you guys have been gone quite often. He also goes back and takes care of uh, Kel Thud's dogs that he has back in his house as well, <laughs> oh. even before coming back. Uh, so he kind of does like double duty. He in particular has a motorbike that is kind of like a cafe, mm -hmm. like a cafe style, like a uh, um, artifice bike that he gets <laughs> around on through the city. And so he's always been a very mechanically inclined. He has short uh, curly hair. He kind of has Steve Buscemi eyes, but the build of, uh, oh, no. <laughs> he's, he's a very tired boy. Uh, uh, but he's a halfling, uh, no different than probably about the size of, uh, uh, of Frodo. Uh, but he's in particular, he is a leather jacket kind of guy. So he has on right now. He's got that light Brown, like, uh, like pilot's jacket. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he's like, yo, yo, cuddles, cuddles is a, 
a guy that has to, uh, you know, back up his bravado a little bit with his stature and size. So he, you know, he definitely rocks the, you know, the, uh, the leather, leather mechanic, uh, jacket lifestyle. It's got his patches on it. Like, and he knows that like he's been waiting forever and ever to be able to put that he's a warden on the back of his jacket for quite some time. I have this image in my head now of a menacing and angry cuttlefish or cuttlefish rather with a cutlass <laughs> and it's been made even better with the addition of the jacket. <laughs> the I, want to, I want to RP this tiny sized character pirate. <laughs> That's fantastic. Go for it. Do you want to be him? You want to be cuddles? Oh. Oh God. Uh, you volunteered yourself. You just volunteered right yourself. Yeah, you said I want to. Yeah. <laughs> He cuddles for us. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. All right. Oh damn. Don't worry. He was just made up. <laughs> <laughs> he, there is no precedent, so it's uh, no. other than what yeah. I've just described. So. All right. Uh, do you, Do you walk in on Cuddles being awake or or or? or is he, Cuddles, is working. Your desk? Cuddles is yeah, working on the airship that you guys brought back that looks like hammered hell. He would be uh he would be on a roller board under underneath it in in the dry dock at the moment. So. Uh, yeah, so we would walk yeah. in. Uh, yeah, you would probably even be doing your paperwork or your morning stuff because it's very quiet usually this early. And we would see you first. Oh, it's somebody that I actually enjoy. Good morning, Cuddles. Oh, uh, oh, wow, well, you are not the parts I was thinking of, but uh, it's good to see you two. Any idea why this is so banged up? <laughs> oh boy, we have a story uh, and a oh, report a actually give. Oh, really? And paperwork. And paperwork, too. My favorite. Yeah, you should ask Kilthad. Have you talked to Kilthad yet? No, he him? came in and collapsed instantly. It's like he's been running at <laughs> You hear what I'm assuming that his snore. Oh, trust me. We did it for the last who knows how many days. Do you have any idea how hard it is to rouse him? 16 hours he's been going. Sleeping? Yeah. Oh, and then he, he literally came back and just passed out. Yeah. yeah well, has he even he gotten up to like, use the bathroom? He's going to explode. Ask me. All he does is come back with a busted ass airship and leave me with the pots. There is a plate of scrambled eggs that he has currently on. He's sitting in his office right now. And you can see there's the glass that looks out at the rest of the dry dock. And you can see he has his two pit bulls. Uh, Oh, which no. <laughs> which uh one of them is Gabby and the other one is named Billy Ocean and <laughs> <laughs> Gabby is a chocolate pit bull <laughs> Billy Ocean is the uh hippopotamus gray uh and they're <laughs> while they're he's called blues <laughs> <laughs> and uh no it's a hippo it's a little baby hippo and they're actively lapping up his cheesy eggs as he sleeps there. So oh he hasn't sat down for too long before he went out. You know, well, at least somebody's eating. It's remarkable it took them this long. 12 hours they sat and waited. Very well uh, trained. Very well trained. Um, yeah, no, we ran into some sky pirates. Uh, that was, that's what one of the things we ran into. Excuse me? Yes. Yeah, no. it's one of the things we have to report. Are you... Yeah, because it goes... It, it gets worse than just that. Are you pulling my leg? Did you did you run into some rocks with this thing? No. No, trust trust me. Cotton and I are pretty good when it comes to flying this thing. We just couldn't really outrun a storm being used to hide the sky pirates. They attacked the airport just just east of Stormforge. Before I go forward of this, Robert, you, um, am I remembering right that you'd said Sky Pirates are kind of legendary as in- They haven't happened in our while. lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, yep. like we would know the name. Um, so even Lolly would tell Cuddles, it was the Howling Hatred. You've read about it. I can guarantee it. History check for Cuddles. Uh, what's how much you let about you know. It. How much yeah. intelligence does Cuddles have? This is going to be a fascinating question. You're a warden. I hope you're a little smart. Uh, go ahead, go ahead and roll <laughs> a. Oh, 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 wait, wait, hang on, hang on, Callisto. What is your intelligence stat? My intelligence stat is plus zero. There we go. Average. See? I'm an average person. <laughs> wait, no, go with mine. It's a plus one. <laughs> it is a plus three for you. Neither. You're in study now. 
Plus you... zero is an average intelligence, so it's, it's an fine. Average in it's an average intelligence. That's not even a plus. You might as well just say mine is zero. <laughs> D20 plus Ooh. three. D20 plus three. Got it. Ooh. Let's see how that does. Yes. Oh, oh. God, I oh. Have been studying. Cuddles is right. so passing this semester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah there's a reason why Carter loves. There's a reason why Carter loves this this guy. Uh, what's real quick? What's uh, what what would um, what's the bonus for his insight? Real quick, this absolutely is going to prompt an ins insight roll. Uh, plus two. All right. I feel like you auto get it. Are you telling me? <laughs> so you're telling me the goons from Yansi Bin showed up and attacked your airship. <laughs> Lolly's not you, smiling. Yeah, neither is Callisto. <laughs> You're joking, right? No. You're no. joking, right? You... We have to tell the we have to tell the ports to Dark with Stormford. It should be coming in the next day or two. And they've reached out to other ports around nearby to have them land. Because I think for good I think we're fairly certain that we might be encountering possibly a war with these Sky Pirates and Yon Sibin themselves. Oh god. So, they want us on the ground. That includes the city. Oh, oh, by the sweet name of House Bane Ray. Yeah. You yeah, realize so... how bad this is? Right. That's why we're here. We want to yes, tell the rest of the wardens. We need more people on this. We can't handle it ourselves. We have the airy. We needed more people on this yesterday. Oh, I agree. God. Oh, more people. We wouldn't have me, been so we'll banged up. Damn. Well, it does make sense why why I thought it was was uh, impact damage. I mean, look at some of this. It. Only two things can do this kind of thing. It, it, a wrench comes like flying in about three feet above your head. I told you to get off the damn telecommuter radio. You have too much damn fun. Oh, uh, hello, Cresto. Molly. As he turns hey, off the intercom and walks out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought you were on, um. thought you were on that damn radio again. Luke has been raised from the dead. No, oh, he, he looks down. He's got the sc uh, so much for those scrambled hours. eggs. Sixteen hours. Sixteen hours, and you didn't okay, even he did to tell me it. what it was before you came in. You couldn't have said <laughs> it was legendary sky pirates. What would have done it matter if I had told you? <laughs> Sixteen hours. I've been doing this damn paperwork. I thought you'd flown into another mountain. <sighs> well, he's just gonna giggle and smile at Callisto. <laughs> Who's just watching this back and forth? Cuddles. This is just part of it. It's just, if you want to be a warden, you better get used to paperwork. Because 90% of it is shitty paperwork. The other 10% is trying it's not to die. Pirates. Oh, you, <laughs> it's going to be... No. It'll be fine. I, it, it, yeah, it'll be fine because I'm going to file all this damn paperwork. Oh, <laughs> We'll get to that briefing hours soon. Later than I could have. You know, did you make? Did you did you at least start on my list? Because we can't handle sky pirates if the ship's not fixed. You understand? This is the chain of command. How things roll down. Someday yeah, you'll like be on the council, but it's not today. Oh, your generation right. just we, thinks, we oh my god, I can get on the council yeah, tomorrow. We're gonna go. We'll wait, 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 wait. You, what? You'll handle the paperwork. Well, we yes. have to give the briefing. We were there, so we're going to handle that. Kilthud, you fix the ship. Cuddles, oh, you quiet. fix the Kilthud. No, it's all, I'll fix the ship. But it's going to take... Uh, uh, oh, looking at the damage, it's going to take... Oh, it'll take at least two, three days to hammer all this out, but we'll get it. We'll get it fixed. Well, that's why I believe in you, Cuddles. It'll be done in two days. Two... Oh, God. Well, he's gonna put her hand on Cuddle's shoulder. Just, just make sure Kilthut feeds you well. You deserve uh, that. Uh, I'd rather a race, but uh, it's the warden life for you. <laughs> you're not even, you're not even a warden yet. It's, it's, I look over at, at Callisto. God, he's 
brooding around the office like he's Michigan. God, if Michigan and Cuddles met each other, it would. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> there's two people that could go on about their hatred of things for the entire afternoon between how Cuddles feels about tourists inside a storm forge and oh, how Michigan feels started. about. I heard I heard feathers this morning and I looked up outside and then there was all these birds. First oh, that's a part pirates. of our report. <sighs> oh yes. That They're gonna you? hopefully be helping us out. They don't no, even no, no, have no, a, that is not the, us. The Aracock summoned them. <sighs> the Aracock aren't even gonna block the streets. It's not gonna mess up any of your writing the entire week. It's not like we a festival or parades are all the way up there. What are you worried about, Cuddles? I don't know. I've been I've been chosen from that for that meat from Eddie Valkeen's cart and last time all the tourists took it and they said it was gross but they didn't understand you've got to do that with the relish <laughs> always have the relish man it's about the only thing I can level with you with is uh, one of the street vendors being out before you can get there <sighs> I'm sure everything is fine yeah let's get to work uh, let's uh, leave them to talk about feed uh, yeah good luck uh, just to let you all know uh we're working on getting extra cannons, all right? And of the arcane variety, because God knows what... If this threat actuates and becomes something bigger, we're going to need all the elemental help we can get. Yeah. Can I recommend you... staying away from uh, air? Let's focus on, like, fire. If you saw, that did some damage. Kelthud crosses his arms and rolls his eyes at you. I'm sorry, what was that? Okay, I'm leaving. Noted. I'm about to take an air elemental over here. I'll show you an air elemental. She says just passing by. <laughs> ah! As he gets hit by one of his dogs, Gabby comes running out. <laughs> Gabby's up to like waist length on him. So it's just like, ah! Oh, it just crumples over. Oh, I'm getting his face licked. That's right. Sick him, Gabby. Oh, Billy Ocean no, comes out. I swear to God, if you start them, they're going to pick me up again. <laughs> he goes over and gives you a bit of a wedgie. <laughs> Billy Ocean does. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> so much work getting back done at the Warden's Lodge. Um, <laughs> so much work getting done. <laughs> when we yeah. head into wherever it is we need to do the okay, grueling fine. task of paperwork. So everybody can be yeah. filled in and understand uh, why suddenly there is a lot of interesting things going on outside. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely would love to have like... So I imagine there's some kind of hierarchy in the warden. So I would love to like speak mm -hmm. to like the heads, at least the head of like the warden station in Stormforge, um, to relay that. And because yeah, we need more people. I don't, we can't do it as a party. We need more wardens on hand. You might even have to talk to the sky marshals. Uh, yeah, maybe. Mm. All right, I'm putting in my notes that you guys want to have a uh, meeting with Warden uh, Warden's head council. Woo! Yay! I don't like that you told us you're putting that in your notes. That actually makes me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a GM or DM tell me they're putting that in their notes. <laughs> you gave Robert time to plan things. Disaster. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you requested. It's fine. It's fine. I'll do the talking if we need to. I've got pretty high persuasion. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I've got expertise, so I've got plus 10 to persuasion. Yeah, you do all the talking. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get to Michigan and find out what Michigan's up to. Michigan is, upon stepping back on Stormforge, I think is once again He's still not entirely familiar with all of the city. He's going to wander. He's going to stalk, as is his want. But unlike when first he came to Stormforge, he does not 
linger on street corners. He does not perch himself on rooftops. He does not fall asleep in alleys or streets. If he is welcome, he returns every so often to the Amber Forge and will curl up in the corner. Not wanting to take up too much space, but curling up in the shadowed corner of the room of the forge itself, enjoying the warm and dimming embers of the forge each night. And he is going to, as he walks around Stormforge, I think is just going to observe. He's going to look for any clues he might find. He wants to research specifically the Voshborg. Uh, so he will probably return to Pinnacle's Point and uh, will seek out the head librarian, Yellowstone, and uh, probably ask to have a look through the history of the city. Oh, I see you've returned. <laughs> Yes, unfortunately, without my interesting four-armed friend, but, um... Oh, that is such a shame. His collection is of unfathomable value to us at the Pinnacle's Peak. If he would like to share more with us, please do tell him we can arrange a particular scribe or two to be here. Of course, I will be sure to pass it on to him. Um, of course. I apologize, I do not come to you in more fashionable raiment. Um, it is okay, we are here to seek knowledge, not to critique your fashion sense. Well, perhaps you might instead direct me towards the history of Stormforge. I wish to read about those who built it. Oh, yes, this is the book that Kaival was looking at the last time. Hmm. Yes, I was... Wouldn't it be nice for you both to be able to share a conversation over what you've just read? Hmm. He reads yes. quite quickly, though, so... Uh, good luck. Uh, I will try to keep up. She will go and, and touch the book for you and uh, lay it out. Oh. <laughs> She's sorry, the shade from this bitch. <laughs> oh she was awful to you last time. She's really yeah, only. She was terrible <laughs> last time. But she's really only interested in uh, Kaivar adding to the library. Um, <laughs> she will uh, uh, lay the book out on the uh, on the podium for you. In particular, you want to look uh, up uh, history of the Voshborg? Uh, yeah, I, I want to see if I can find how long have they been operating, um, how much impunity do they act with. Uh, I, I know the vague answers to a lot of these already, but I, I think Mishkin wants to just to understand the specifics. Where do they fit within the ecosystem? of Stormforge. All right. Inside of the book that you have, you get very much the American public education system story of the Voshborg just appearing into existence and there not being a trail of where they link back to. It says they have existed inside the city as long as Stormforge has been here and created. In particular, it does not list a origin for their people or essentially their creation. It only goes on to, to talk about the finer points of their discoveries and their benefit to biological engineering and medical breakthroughs 
of non-magical origin. It does not refer to any of the divination or evocation, abjuration, any of the magics that you have seen with Fane. It is a very white bread description within this book that is in Pinnacle's Point. It gives you almost no more information than what you already know from your first experience with them. Okay. Mishkin is just going to take the book and is going to wander through the rows upon rows of bookshelves, just looking at all of these tomes of history and law and tales and fiction and fact paperbacks leather bound tomes and scrolls and I think eventually he finds himself in an aisle of books of the world outside of Stormforge, of, if such times exist, of Falterer and the land below Stormforge, and specifically he wants to look for any books that might speak of the North. Specifically, a town called High Mount, near the Wilderwood. All right. Go ahead and give me an investigation or a perception check. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. You look for early survival guides. Sometimes early maps and layout of what the Forgotten Lands uh, looked like below. And you are able to pull out some old wilderness guides. Some stuff that are pinned actually by wardens of the past. Some of them detail the openings of particular mines on the mountain before they were closed off. There aren't any warden outpost at this time. There is only wilderness. There's some markings of, in particular, roads that seem to be more bandit infested than others. There are some markings of beast of the field that seem to exist. So some places for uh, uh, megafauna. As you kind of flip through, is there any particular information that you're looking for within the Forgotten Lands below from a time before Stormforge? It is not information that Mishkin searches for. I think as he turns the pages and he looks over lands, familiar lands, there is a melancholy to these pages. As he looks over home, and almost idly, he wonders to himself whether there's any mention made of what happened 50 years ago.
or over, actually, in fact. Almost 60. With a 21, you may go into as much detail as you wish. There is probably mention less of High Mount itself, but the Skyport that rested nearby. Torveth. Merchant vessels traveling from the south, expeditionary forces of wayfinders. And how isolated though this was, nearby towns such as High Mount had little in the way of trade, but being self-sufficient, their knowledge of the surrounding lands would have been invaluable. And then one day, it simply disappeared. It was a small town. People move on. No one would question a hundred or so people doing so. No one really noticed when a small town in the middle of a snowy landscape was heard from no more. Mishkin just not at this not even really acknowledgement but he just closes it up it's not sure why he looked but he doesn't put these items back on the shelf he just sort of steps away and <clears throat> thank you for the book it was Informative. My pleasure. And if you do run into your friend, please. I Both of you, we you would love to have in... you back. I'll be sure to pass on, I'm sure. Who knows? We could even maybe take a gander at the more ancient tomes when you both return I believe my friend would be interested I'll mention it to him thank you and Mishkin leaves back to the Amber Forge You gave me the most depressed college vibes of my life being alone in the library. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. You're welcome. No coffee. Long shut down. Just me in the back of the library going, what am I doing here? <laughs> University <laughs> library is when I discovered I liked coffee. <laughs> I'm not sure. Many of 5 a.m. Many of 5 a.m. Or our espresso machine was about the same reliability as a McDonald's ice cream machine. So, it's, you realize to bring your own a long time ago. <laughs> what do you do after this melancholy library visit? Is there anything else that Mishkin would be up to yeah i i think heading back to the amber forge um i imagine after we resolve what happened uh with ifdrin and the upgrades to callisto's gear but the sword that hangs underneath the very weather-beaten burlap that is passing for a poncho. Uh, the sword that was gifted by the stranger in the snow. This owl-like creature. 
this blade of second chances. It it hangs heavy. Mishkin is still not entirely sure what it is. But he thinks Ifrin might know. Or at least might be able to help. And he'll ask her when the time is right. He has no reason to keep it secret from anyone. Everyone has seen the blade, but... And it is quiet when it does not intrude. Ifdrun is a workaholic. <laughs> so even after the forge is shut down and closed, they're still working on nothing major, but like minor tinkering on some of the commissions that they've been handed. Um, so you would still have to intrude on something, but because I think there's, it's very rare for there to be a moment of silence in the forge. Um, but it's nothing major. I think they're probably working on. Um, probably some chainmail, I think, relinking some of the links in the chainmail. Probably a warden who had went by going to a bit of a fight and ended up de damaging it, so wanted to repairs before they leave again the next day. Um, so yeah, just, just tending to that in the forge very quietly to themselves. You see them, they have kind of, um, they're kind of like magnifying uh, spectacles over their goggles, over one eye as they're just very intricately um, uh, almost looping each individual um, loop of the chainmail in the armor um, with, I think, a little snack at their side that V probably left for them because they know very well that they will not get out of their seats when they have a job to do. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how you find Ifjan. Mishkin enters, and the fire of the forge reflecting off his orange fur and his green eyes, sort of doing that thing that cat's eyes do in the dark, where you can only really see the circles underneath. I think this is the first of your projects that I understand what it is you are crafting. Yeah. No, it's just a pretty simple fix. I think they they ran into an owlbear, I think, in the Forgotten Lands, and the owlbear got a good slash in on them. They haven't, maintained, they haven't been maintaining their armor, so didn't do much good for them. They're okay. They're alive, but could be more alive. I'm sure under your expert craft, they'll be safer than ever. Yeah. I can only do so much, though. I need to maintain this, make sure it doesn't rust, clean it often. Uh, how can I help you? Is Callista being annoying again? I can talk to him if you want. Your son is really annoying. Only Don't tell him that. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. A mother's prerogative. I assume you're not here to talk chainmail unless you do i can get you fitted if you need some <laughs> no I, I fear it would slow me down but um i am here to talk shop so to speak hey and uh, you see they kind of set the tools down lift the uh, magnifying lenses away are you looking to be an apprentice as well i usually can only take on one but i think i can take on another Unlike our insectoid friend, I have neither the skill nor the dexterity, but um, I have an item that might be of use, or at least of interest to you. It's my birthday, and you're already bringing me so many gifts. Okay, yeah, let's, let's see the item. Yes, I, I felt somewhat guilty, and he starts taking it out from underneath the poncho, burdening you with yet another item. You seem to have been somewhat inundated but um i'm i'm a blacksmith that's is, i'm literally paid to be inundated it's fine context at this moment uh you can see that partly sort of slumped into the pile of dragon carcass uh is a very soundly sleeping kaiva 
proceed as planned. When we were down in the ice wastes of Fultura, we were approached by a stranger, a being of immense knowledge and wisdom, but I also believe of not insignificant power. And okay. they granted me this as a short sword. I, I do not understand the symbol, the sigil at its top. You'll see the talon and the wing. Yeah. Yeah. Just hand over and they'll reach a hand out to take the short sword. Um, and I think again, flip down the magnifying lenses over their goggles and we'll start doing a once over of the short sword to see what he can figure out from the initial just brief sweep of the object before taking more magical means. Go ahead and roll your blacksmithing for this because you're just doing a, uh, a general check of the physical. Yeah. Do I have advantage or is it not? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Thirty-four. This is a plus three short sword. It is of an alloy that you have never seen, nor can identify. It is of otherworldly metamaterial. Your first guess would this would be of possibly a meteorite? I think you see them kind of look over this, kind of see the runes, um, and then pull out a tool, like one of the tools that they were using to kind of loop the rings in the chain just moments ago. They kind of take one of the tools, kind of like scratch it um, at the, the blade of the sword, and you see their brows furrow for a moment, and then you scratch, scratch at it again. You do feel like you hear a slight song, just for a moment. Interesting. Okay. I think they've worked with magical and cursed items. I don't think they're... I don't think they freak out, but they do take note of that. And when they hear that, they turn to Mishkin. Have you drawn this? Used it in common, I suppose. have not, no. As it sang to you. Truth be told, I was reluctant to use it, having seen your son's track record with magical weapons. I didn't want to risk anything until I had placed it in the hands of an expert. What do you mean, my son's track record with magical items? What did he do? Your son has done nothing but... I apologize, it is not my place to say, but... I am sure if it is a problem, he will come to you. Hmm. Your son. Your son is one of the bravest souls I have ever known, and one of the strongest too. I do not doubt his tenacity for a second. If you will sigh and stand up and walk, I think away from you, kind of turn their back to you as they go to the other side of the forge, and you see them like rush, like going through drawers, pulling out at um, different pieces of tools and equipment and setting it down on the table. Yes, I know. I raised him. 
not I, surprised I about that. I, I did not mean to cause any no, undue concern. It's fine. He's just... Sometimes he takes on too much. So... I have noticed. Yeah. But also I know what it is to bear a mother worry for a son. Um, this sword, and they'll kind of set the swords on the edge of the table so the blade is sticking off the edge, and I'll just grab a hammer and slam down on it, and oh, I think okay. the hammer breaks. You see the the handle of the hammer snap off, and the, ham, the hammer head hit the floor, and the blade itself is not even scuffed. Nothing is broken or it's just fine. Question. Yeah. For you, Drac, I need everyone else to take their headset off very quick. I will give you a thumbs up in just a second. Oh. Oh, no. I'm terrified. <clears throat> Going off the role play that you've given us with Iftrin, she has always seemed to be a incredibly positive person. Yeah. someone who probably believes in second and third chances, no? I'd say so, yeah. Okay. That is all I need to know. Okay. But yes, you see them slam this hammer down into um, onto the blade of the sword, and the hammer is what gives. The handle snaps, and the hammerhead hits the ground, leaving the blade completely unscratched, unfazed. I don't know what this is. It's a very incredible sword. It's probably one of the most sharp. I've seen it has a very good weight to it, very good balance, but I don't quite, I've never seen this and the point gesture to the blade. I, when I you both look metal. down at where the hammer had dropped, the hammer is not broken. It is in one solid piece again. Um, hey, well with that, um, I didn't see a mending enchantment on this. I don't think it's that. Yeah, no, like I said, I don't know what this is. And apparently there's even more I don't know. And they'll kind of crouch down and pick up the hammer and ha just look at the handle of it, seeing that there's not even any evidence of a breakage if anything the hammer looks stronger than it was before or the day that you purchased it do you mind please be my guest and it will slap it away again to try and see if they can break it again this time it does not break huh hmm okay and they're gonna set the hammer down okay i think this might call for something more more than just a once over um could you can you brighten and heat up the forge a bit more and just gesture, very just casually gesture to the forge. Um, just use the bellows. We don't use magical fire. <laughs> the Rishkin bellows. was literally about to <laughs> <laughs> the, the bellows. Was like, okay. And goes over and summoning his mage hands regardless, just grasps these scaled hands around the bellows and just begins to, quite weakly, he's got very skinny arms, but just <laughs> begins to push down. 
and they will again rush to the other side of the forge, completely going on the other end of the room and go through the drawers there and pull out a sheet of metal. It's kind of like, I'd say it's probably, probably like six by six inches. It's not that big, but you can see that in the center of it is uh, a rune, a magical magic circle carved into it. Um, Mishkin, since I think you're, you're a wizard, right? I am. Um... Oh, oh, this is not in character. This is this is out oh, of character. No, yeah, Mishkin's no, a wizard, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, you'd recognize that the circle is an identify, essentially an identify spell. Right. Okay. Um, and you'd know that because they themselves probably don't have magic. This is like the equivalent of a scroll of just casting it through a scroll. So they they'll get this kind of metamatic plate out, set it down on the table. Um, on a on the anvil by the forge and as you're heating the bellows they'll grab a pair of metallic tongs and pick up the metal plate and put it in the forge and hold it there for a moment heating it up um and they don't seem to really like look at a time or anything they just kind of almost in through into it, intuition understand when they need to pull it out and they pull it out and you see the metal is red hot but the etching of the magic circle is ice cold still it's still um the silver metal of the plate that you saw earlier and they'll set it down again on the anvil okay um and they'll grab the sword very delicately i think with more reverence than they did initially now that they've seen all of these things that they don't understand about it and they will set it on the this metal plate this red hot metal plate and grab a hammer again and this time with more grace than before not lashing out to break but with the the force and intention of a blacksmith they'll strike the sword with the hammer right above this plate with the identify spell on it and they will cast identify to see if they can learn more about this item I need you to roll as I try to protect this sneeze from erupting (laughs) you're blacksmithing However, not at advantage. Okay. I kind of want to know what this is. Don't don't go wanna... don't roll just yet. We just had an ad hit uh, while I was trying to sneeze. I missed snoozing it. When you sneeze so hard, you miss the snooze. Oh, I missed the snooze, dude. <laughs> miss the snooze. Go ahead, stretch it out. We'll break for three minutes here. This is my favorite interaction with the two players who were not in Meteor. Anymore. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Bife and I are just like behind the scenes, like. This is we like... have no idea. I don't know. When you talk about the uh, moments of the beauty of the Frankenstein Robert, this is absolutely it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they have no context. They have no, so have like, no context. Oh. It's great. It's so great. Just Suddenly like, Lolly comes in. Oh, this sword is this. Sword is out. I mean, hey, in a, in a past life, technically could be thrown. Uh, by the way, we already got Ian Cuddle Scar. Ian Cuddles, Cuddle Star is in. Hell yeah. <laughs> he even looks like he me. is literally, he really a, he's literally a hobbit. So I that was the. How your rendition of uh, Cuddle Scar uh, is sort of a potent mix of Joe Pesci and John Mulaney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the vague mix, like pissed off, but also very much of the warbly disposition. What are you doing? <laughs> get out. I just want to get, get out of here. I swear to God, Kill Thud, you're killing me over here, man. <laughs> I just want my subway sandwich. <laughs> I, I that was the straight up a roll on DM Heroes when I asked for a, a Hobbit or a half yeah. Love it. And it gave me a great one. I was like, yes. Every bit mm-hmm. of it. I love it. Uh, he's a level 3 artificer, so. Excellent. I- NPC it's, it's, imported. 
It's so like me, useless. except even more easy to shove into a locker. <laughs> <laughs> just don't let Dala from Eden Falls near him. She will destroy this oh, man. Wow. I mean, she might shoot him. <laughs> oh my God. Or they could go oh, on a very '80s mean? motorcycle ride together. <laughs> Montage time. Or she could. She will steal his motorbike and go on a ride herself. No, she'll steal your life. Cuddles is riding in the back. Last episode was eventual. Our short kings. By the way, I'm realizing that everyone who works at the shop uh, in Stormforge is a short king. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna yeah, have to, and that's I've noticed as well, which is very funny. The mechanic shop yeah, has definitely we, uh, been short king. So just tall as hell. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the rest of the uh, the high council is gonna yeah, I guess spread it out a little bit. <laughs> high council. Is well, I mean, the guy that relatively high. Yeah, the one that you introduced me to in the beginning, he was pretty tall. I can't remember if he was a human or an elf, but Are we I know he was one? annoying and I hated him. Uh, he's yeah, a real, he was a really prickish back. elf that was there. Yeah. All right, we are back. Yeah. By the way, I thought a lot about how artifice cast spells because of a past character, so I'm glad I get to shred it off with Ifjin. Um, yes. But yeah, they will strike this um, hammer on against the blade of the sword over this now molten hot like a better term, scroll of identify and cast identify. And it's a without advantage. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. Okay. Okay. 28. Um I why not? I'll use a D10. No, I'll use a D6. Uh, D6. Uh, yeah, D6s. I'll use a D6. Going for the 30 plus, okay. I feel like this is an important sword, and I feel like the DC be pretty mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. Damn, thirty exactly. Clean okay. thirty. Mm. When you strike this sword, the sparks that etch out into the flames of the actual forge are like the unfurling wings of a phoenix. I need you to pick out Iftrin's favorite number. One through a hundred. Oh. Um. I think Iftrin's favorite number is two. And it's because she always says that she'll try anything at least twice because she usually does it wrong the first time. That is wonderful. That I is so fitting. That. That's so good. Whenever you see the wings of the phoenix unfurl inside your forge, You realize where this second chances comes from. This blade has been forged by the great Phoenix itself. The materials used still unknown. Some kind of metal form from meteorite stronger than anything that you have ever used before. But in particular, this blade resonates in your heart. And it's a weapon in its property that you seldom handle. But its property of second chances isn't as cut and dry as just identifying a flame tongue blade or one of life stealing there is some component inside you that you have to unlock but at the same time when you put this blade in you have unknowingly blessed your forge you have a chance when creating weapons inside your forge now, if you roll a two, it will add this second chances property 
to the item. The second chance property is that much like a wish spell. But unlike the spell that looks to your words to define its ability, this property activates on what you hold in your heart. Ruby, this is an NPC, man. <laughs> Damn, okay. Okay. Um, can you watch Iftrin look into the flames of the forge and at first they seem obviously in awe of whatever this is it's a strange sort of strange properties that we just saw but at first it seems like they're almost certain they're going to figure out what it is through this spell. So they seem somewhat calm. And then you see a look of confusion cross their face. And then I think the best, best to describe it is a look of shock follow soon after. Who, who did you say, who did you say gave you this? A stranger. But I believe the name was Emberwing. Does that mean anything to Iftrin? Iftrin would only know of the Great Phoenix, not of a disciple or a champion in particular. Okay. And the they will pick up the still red hot um, scroll of identify, and you see them dunk it into a bucket of water. You see steam billow out as it cools down rapidly. Um, and then they pull it out and set it on the table and hold the sword with, didn't think it was possible, but somehow even more reverence than even before. This, I wasn't able to identify much from this, even with the spell. And I think that alone says a lot about what this is or could be but this was forged at the very least by the flames maybe even by the great phoenix with what material i quite frankly don't know um just from the patterning of the triations i assume some kind of meteor Beyond that, I don't know. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't keep this close and I'll hand it to you. If Trin can make you one last roll, this time at advantage. Okay. Still blacksmithing was a different. So Max was thinking. 2d20 plus 15, keep the highest. <laughs> 28. The same thing I rolled last time. Anything you want to add to it or luck yeah, the roll? Well. You can also I'll, luck the I'll advantage spend. roll. Oh, actually, I, I think I'll luck it. Yeah. I think you luck that as well to draw. Yeah. Fish for it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 
33. Boy, oh boy. 33. Adding an inspiration to 33. Do it. Just do it. Yeah, I'll do a D10. Let's go. Let's go big. After rolling so high and missing something by one, absolutely not. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a one. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> You never used the Bardic Inspiration from earlier, did you? I didn't. It's the same day. I think you can use that. I think it's already used. Day already used the Inspiration. Damn. Okay, never mind. Yeah. If Trin, there is. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Something still hidden inside this blade, and you know it. But it's just a property that is so attached to the wielder's emotional state that you won't know until the time is right and the conditions are met. This property is divine. Okay, can I do something weird? <laughs> um, yes, I think, always. Feeling this with a kind of definitely neurodivergent. Eritrean is definitely neurodivergent. They, they, 100%. They kind of, I think they have, this has definitely become a almost fixation for them, I think, especially feeling that there's something more to this. They want to know what it is. But always have like the knowledge that th they can't know until the wielder um, unlocks it. So I would like, if you're okay with this, to steal a bit of a thing that you you mentioned in a previous thing of of if you be able to make equipment that has a special type of attunement that they are also attuned with and fully aware that they can't alter this thing especially not understanding what it is can they make like a little like a almost like a phone chain but for a sword so they can like tangent like partially be attuned to it partially connect to it so they can feel whenever mishkin or whoever wields it unlocks this potential I think they just want to know when it happens and how it happens. I don't think they want to be the one to do it, but they, I think they want to know about it when it does. Not only will you know, but you will see it inside of the forge's flames when it happens. Okay. I love that. Okay. Okay. So I think as they hand it over to you, they kind of pause for a moment when they feel this when they feel that there's more to learn from it give me give me a second actually and before you can take it we'll keep the sword with them and again go to the other side of the forge again um and, but this time i think grab something right off the um table and you'll see it's a it's a dagger that they were working on the previous day for another customer and they're like it's fine they won't miss it and they will <laughs> i think they'll take one of the gems that they just finished like in, like embedding into it and pop it out to so like we'll replace it later they won't it's just one set it aside and they're going to make a like small trinket to attach to this sort of second chances to be their tether to it so they can feel and see when this change and unlocking happens um and that's going to be their kind of channel of their special achievements kind of tangential um and then we'll hand it over um i'll be honest with you this gem does nothing that'll be helpful to you um beside looking nice it's mostly so i can this sword is more than just magical 
or enhanced. It's honestly almost alive. And I... There's more to it that I don't think even really a blacksmith can understand or learn, at least not through the conventional means. But you might be able to understand and learn it, and I want to know when you do, so... That's just going to let me know. It's going to be like a... kind of a beep when it happens. For me, you won't hear it, because that'd be very awkward if you're in like a quiet situation where you need to be quiet and it beeped on you. But I will know when it happens, and I'll get to see, hopefully, when it happens as well. Mishkin just reaches a wrist across and lays it on your shoulder. This means a great deal to you, doesn't it? It's incredible. I haven't... There are not many things I haven't seen before. I am. I might not look at it, but I am pretty old. Um, but this, I've never seen anything like this. Definitely haven't worked on anything like this. I don't think I could work on anything like this. I don't think it would let me. Do you believe it to be divine in nature? Um, honestly, that is as good as any explanation. Um, above the table, the Great Phoenix is like acknowledged as a god, right? Or is it just like a powerful beast? Say that again? Is the Great Phoenix like considered a god or just a like great beast, a powerful beast? No, it is a it is absolutely a, a, a godly entity. Godly entity, okay. Yes, no. Oh, absolutely. Again, I, I don't know if it was forged just from the flames of the Great Phoenix or by the Great Phoenix himself, but whatever. Either way, it's beyond anything any anyone could make. Well, then it will take some careful wielding. But... Yes. Though I will be honest, if anything breaks, it'll probably be you before it. I understand. But I'm not entirely surprised. Are you... Pardon me for assuming. Are you... Do not use a sword. Mishkin just raises his wrists. I've never had much need. I, I don't know the requirements for this. Like I said, I couldn't really figure out much. Um, I don't know if actually being good with it is necessary, but it's something you need to do to feel or to understand before you can understand it. So... Gem, beat me when it happens. I get to see it. I promise. I will. What? Thank you for your time. Is the one thing that Iftrin has wanted in their household oh item okay cool <laughs> not necessarily like a just a question not just an item it could be anything about the amber forge like an extra office or okay. another bedroom what has always been their desire of something they've wanted for the Amber Forge in their home. But they've never had. But they've always thought about in their heart of hearts, those kind of like, oh, if I won the lottery, or if I had enough time, yeah. if I just that time I take that vacation, staycation, I'll I'll knock this project out. Or okay. if oh, we had this. 
we had this item, man, we'd be living high on the hog. I'm gonna roll real quick to see how much of a workaholic they are. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, I think I'll do 15 of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think they'd want another room, and I think in that room they'd want um, essentially like not not a lab, but like the forge is for like typical blacksmithing, but they are an artificer as well. They would want a like a space specifically set for working on automatons and machinery. Um, they they're often approached by sometimes even the city itself to work on these kind of machinery and they can only take on small projects at a time because they don't have the like space dedicated to that um so i think they would want a room um almost like a lab dedicated to working with machinery and automatons and that kind of stuff Michigan, you're the one that is probably the most familiar with this side door and where you generally lay down in the forge, kind of away from everyone else that is near Iftrin's main office. When you kind of say your pleasantries and turn back towards the corner, do you notice it first and then Iftrin... There is another door. I didn't put that there. I think they were very instinctually, and I think you probably, this is the first time you notice it. They'll reach into their boot and pull out a dagger, and they'll slowly approach <laughs> the door. This new door that's appeared out of nowhere. The lining of the archway is that of and fiery burnt orange mixture of the meteorite that is the sword and almost like a very orange's bronze. Okay. They, I think, will, before they push the door open, they see this and you see them become even more interested in that space than what is beyond the door. Okay, so new thing I learned, this material can be an alloy, um, as they see that is combined with another very normal bronze. Um, did your sword? <clears throat> and they're gonna push the door open. This leads to a pocket dimension style of room of requirement. It is whatever Iftrin needs it to be. Huh. And when you open it up, there's a little bit of like, when it pops the door, there's just a little bit of, just a little light flame that like, that ranges and goes around the side. And whatever you're thinking that you need out of this room when you open it up, it is. So does it change every, like, depending on what I need every time? Or is it like yes. a... Oh. It is, it is a room of requirement for both your own personal life and profession. It is I a pocket if... dimension, so it can range wildly it does not have to be contained physically to the size of the amber forge think of it as your own mixture of mansion or tiny hut essentially only you and your clan can open this door it's the same style attunement as before. And if you are holding the uh, sword as well, you can open up the door, Michigan, but you cannot change the requirement. Michigan just watches Iftrin just head on in. 
I'm just watching I... from afar and slowly kind of piecing what's happening together. Iftrin is very confused, I think, as they walk around this room. And I think this room, I know I said I wanted it to be a lab, but I think because of it's what is required, I think right now, all if you can think about is what kind of equipment they would need to forge something like this sword. So I think it's another forge back here, but with much better equipment. Um, Full set of divine tools. I don't know what Irchin's, how Irchin's going to respond. Uh, <laughs> Excited squee, perhaps, at this point, because I'd be there. <laughs> Ed McMahon is back there. <laughs> Publisher's <laughs> Clearinghouse! Um. Um. I think if Jim will walk out again, just very calmly walk out in, close the door, and then open it again, and then walk in to see if anything's changed. And because it hasn't, they go... Michigan, I'm very confused. Some things are larger than us, Iftrin. Hmm. But... I suppose second chances always come to those who deserve it. I have no idea how I'm going to explain this to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll find a way. I'll leave you to explore and think of some explanations. Yeah. Yeah. And close the door again and then open it. <laughs> they're just going kind to of stand at the doorway, opening, closing the door over and over. <laughs> no, you're going to tell me what did you pay for this? <laughs> How long have you been I saving? I didn't pay anything. <laughs> it's the college. Like, you know we've been saving for <laughs> Zebra's University. Zebra's <laughs> University. Did you sell your Real soul? Life. Oh! You used it. It was absolutely it's the grandchild's education. <laughs> Did you read? Did you really need divine tools? Who? What customers are going to come in here for this? <laughs> I don't know. It, they were just there when I opened the door. I didn't do anything. I didn't. I, I heard didn't, Yancey Benz you? in town. <laughs> <laughs> just want to move the next one. <sighs> Yancey been put in the doghouse for this. <laughs> <I swear. laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I would imagine it's it's uh. Are we we one day? We're one day from uh, Ziva's birthday party. Is that kind of how? I say so because it's been a couple of days since we um it's been a few days since we landed at least from in yeah ed scene because they've been staying at a forge for a couple of days see i'd say it's, i'd say like maybe one or two days um before before Zima's birthday farouk's big ass head is gonna be up like looking through the window and like past the you know the the plant the succulents and the plants that are in the window i'm sorry i got my hands full i can't knock on the door uh, I break sourdough, and I'm just gonna have these just ridiculous amounts of bread that I've <laughs> brought with me. Is this in the same the same moment? So like, after the yes, mission goes up, yes, is hundred percent. Mishkin, seeing that Iftrin is somewhat preoccupied at their own yeah. door, uh, Mishkin is just going to head over to the door and opening it up for you, Farouk. Happy birthday! Oh no, I got the wrong date. How is it... loud is this and how strongly does the bread smell? <laughs> oh, dude. Strong, dude. Sea salt, sourdough. Mm. Yeah, Kai, Kai, you wake Kaivar up with this. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> I look I look at Michigan. It's Dave's birthday tomorrow. Yes, it is tomorrow. And then he starts to smile. Looks like it's a sleepover. <laughs> I will leave the two of you to it. I am going to take in some fresh air before I sleep, but I will indulge in a light midnight snack, perhaps later. 
I'll leave the butter out. <laughs> Mishkin just nods at Farouk and sort of patting him on the back with an empty wrist, just heads out into the street. And keeping the sword close and mulling over everything that Ifrin had said, everything Mr. Ifrin had demonstrated. There is new determination in the way that Mishkin walks. Because this is not simply a blade of second chances, but it is a means to kill a devil. And it is something he has been looking for for near to 70 years. Ifrin is still opening, closing the door. In the wood. <laughs> Just absolutely does not know what to make of this, and hears um, Farouk come in. Um, wait, you're here early. I know, I know. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I guess I got so excited. We've been so busy uh, taking care of the area up north. Uh However, I did bring enough for a little trial run. I've kind of come up with something on my own. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, he, he unfurls from his pack. He has some fresh made marinara sauce from homegrown tomatoes up at the top oh. of the city. And he also has some fresh rolls of mozzarella and fresh picked basil. What I learned when I was up there is that just because I don't know how to make pizza, I can still make pizza. And he makes small little sourdough rounds to go put in the hearth. <laughs> as he dresses them up with the marinara and the basil and the fresh mozzarella and puts them in <laughs> as he learns to make his basically his own uh, bagel bites, but with sourdough. He's making bagel bites. I love that. <laughs> These are incredible. I think, I think V would come back. I think V would probably work in late um, at the library. He's the cook <laughs> of the house. So I think they would love to see this. Um, so I think they would they'd probably be working in late and come home um, to see to see Farouk working in her kitchen. Um, but I think she'll be fine mm. with it. As, as, a, as a side note, probably just as uh, as V opens the door, she sees the the yet again the primal nature of Kaiva has come out. You know that thing where a dog tries to slyly put its face right next to your plate of food? <laughs> like, Hi, I'm just here. Don't mind me. Yeah, that's the two I rolled on stealth. And it's right next to Farouk's bread. We have a lot of anime moments inside of our kitchen over here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's just like the big hands oh. and then the head just like right next to the dish. Like. <laughs> so everyone's kind of converging while... Uh, Mishkin is outside getting air. Please tell me where Callisto and Lelufia are in this in this moment while the Amber Forge is once again beginning to fill <laughs> with people. I so, so I this this is in the evening because I had said that um, the shop has closed by now, um, which is why. God forbid um, we have like five Ifrin. customers in there too at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's probably late in the evening. <laughs> Um, so I'm trying to figure out where would do you know where we would be, Sam? Do you have any ideas? Do you think it would as be a just mom, be home from somewhere? Yes. Where I would be the day before my son's birthday is up locked in my bedroom wrapping presents. Okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I think I think Calista would be upstairs as well. Um, I, I kind of we would definitely would have done this earlier, but I kind of want to role play it out because there, there are some pieces of it left that I think if Jim would still want to work on. Um, so I think okay, you know, I have an idea. I think. Um, I'm gonna fucking roleplay myself again. If Jim rushes upstairs uh, after they've gone over the awe and confusion of this, um, they'll rush upstairs, and you hear like a just a excited banging on the door. Um, <laughs> Lolly's going to assume it's Siva. Go to bed. <laughs> I'm almost two hundred. I'm almost three hundred years old. Don't, you don't tell me to go to bed. Ugh. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she's like kind of putting a blanket <laughs> over top one of the gifts, just in case. And she goes and opens the door. I'm so sorry, I thought you were Siva. Okay, no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, the, the gift that we've been working on, I need it. There's one last touch that I can do because it's been a new development that I need to figure out how to explain. But there's a new development. Oh, okay. She goes and she um, she grabs it from the little pile of some gifts that they have, and she pulls out this it's a bracelet. She hands it over to Tiftrin. Okay, but don't get and caught, because I know he's trying to sneak and find out what we got him. I actually haven't seen him around, so yes, that might be. Mm, don't case. say that. Last time he wasn't around, he was in danger. No, I I know he's in the house, okay. but he's been very sneaky recently um okay I'm recently ready. why haven't you told me this well you've been busy with your board and stuff but you can still tell me stuff he's I'm been sorry, very I apologize no it's fine it's fine i'm in a great mood right now i'll explain later when i forget to explain it okay. anyway bye and they will <laughs> rush down <laughs> <laughs> They'll rush downstairs, swing open the door of uh, the new pocket dimension they have in their room and slam the door shut behind them. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they're going to be working on this bracelet. And just to give it a brief description of this bracelet, um, it's kind of like a uh, bracelet made of beads and charms, but all of them are pieces of special and unique material or gems that Calissa and Luffy have found on their warden adventures, even beyond this wonderful campaign. Um, and it's going to be... The, the, the plan is to make it a spell focus for Ziva. Um, now that they've kind of awoken to their sorcerer, sorcery powers. I gotta make um, a new... I gotta make a new gift! Damn! <laughs> 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 Why um, not both? Uh, oh, no, I'm glad you said. Now fruit, fruit can get something else different now. I'm, like, I've been going, like, <laughs> well, last week I was like, what does a young spellcaster need? Like, what? It, what it, uh, yeah. <laughs> we all brought double gifts. <laughs> um, and they have a bunch of different um, pieces of special material. And I think one of them is definitely, um, I think we said this, one of them is... Uh, a piece of its of, of the obsidian we found mm -hmm. carved into the shape of a bullet um and then lufia you had one, a piece of lightning roots right yeah i wanted to support. do that with mishkin but that's we, you know, fast got, than it would have been but yeah 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 so you got um, some um you have some thundara mm -hmm. yeah um and yeah so you see those beautifully put together with some of um, uh, Ifjan's craftsmanship when it comes to blacksmithing and working with metals, but also some of um, these, I guess, deafness and um, ability with their fingers to cut and shape gems perfectly. Um, all of us have like added our bits and pieces to this and it was done. And then this new room appeared <laughs> and Ifjan has ideas and they're gonna try and work a little bit more on this bracelet with these divine tools. I think they want to up how potent this focus is for Ziva. One, go ahead and roll your percentile die. Okay. Is there advantage on this or? <laughs> 
Yeah. I was okay. I'm glad I asked. Okay. Seventy six. Seventy six and a fifty seven. No two rolled this time. Go ahead and roll your regular blacksmithing at advantage. Okay, I need a D10 already. I'll use the D8 if I need it. <laughs> I have I part. have faith in you. 27. 27. I can I can do more. I'm gonna only use a D8. <laughs> cool it. it is. Yeah, uh, it cool is uh, in this case, there is not a sliding scale since this is a uh, uh, a Ziva okay. a Ziva item. I don't want to give you. I don't want to give your kid a wand <laughs> of fireballs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you can imbue a cantrip of Iftrin's choice into that spell focus. Oh, okay. I need to look at what catches we have. In my mind, I think very artificially, you know, like mending and like what, something yeah. that Iftrin would be like. What does Ziva need for being out and about? You know, cure wounds. <laughs> cure wounds. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not a can trip. Uh, I'll need to. I'll need to look at. I'll look. Take a moment to look at all the cantrips, but I do really like that. Okay. And if there's, if there is a first level spell that just fits, mm -hmm. let me know as well. It's a suggestion that maybe implies a little bit of uh, insult to injury, but spare the dying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, dark. I dark. I just. I just. But well, hey, if he's if he was getting into trouble <laughs> and getting other people, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the the spell focus I had during university. By that's what I had. <laughs> that's spare the dying, otherwise known as beer. <laughs> Just give him light. Uh, Good job, sweetie. Uh, okay, I okay, I have an idea. I want to pitch it. Go for it. Because, um, because like to it has to us, it's been a quite a while, but to everyone in game, it hasn't been that long since um, Ziva went missing, which was a terrifying experience for everyone involved. Um, so I was going to, like initially, I was thinking message, but message doesn't doesn't have a long enough range to be that useful. If, uh, like my message, happens. my message, I always do. You can communicate anywhere in Stormforge. Yeah, and I, I think we already said that. Um, everyone, Ziva, Lulufia, and Clisa already have the necklace that lets them do that anyway. Yep. yep. Um, so I, I'm thinking, in case it, there's ever a situation where, like last time, we couldn't connect, I was thinking find familiar, because then they can, if we see Ziva's familiar, around. One obviously could mean that he's just playing oh. the familiar, but it could also be a way for them to communicate, like get to us if they're in a place where they can't. This just for whatever reason. This is oh. so good on so many levels of you getting Ziva a familiar without talking to Callisto or Lelufia about <laughs> you did proper what? familiar. Like it's it is showing up with the pet when it's like we have not had the conversation of they need they have to take care of this. They have to. This is their pet. That's the a other true ones, grandma. <laughs> yeah, that is. Hundred. You were up with sugar and send them home with mom and dad. <laughs> that is so good. Hundred percent. And I, uh, it's I. I want this to be a. Uh, like you place this in here that the familiar doesn't manifest uh, until Ziva chooses it to. It's like uh, it's like Golden Compass. Like it will, it Ooh, won't yeah. until Ziva is set on what that familiar is. It kind of goes. It can kind of go through the different choices until he is set on what his uh, the, that bond with the familiar. I've been waiting to do yeah. this with a scenario <laughs> where this would work. Uh, where it's not like a venture where like, oh, I already know what I have. Yes, yes, yes. 
No, I love that. Okay, yeah, fine. I think fine familiar then would be the spell. I definitely think it's like a case of like, uh, I do think if just like this would be a good way, like an extra way to make sure if um, to make sure Zebra is safe, they can use them to communicate. Mm. But it's also it's definitely like a case of like they're not talking to the parents at all that they're giving their kids yes. a whole living creature to look after. Um, but yeah, I think you'll see Eftrin in there. Um, probably hear the banging and like the carving of metal and gems and stone through the door as they as they infuse Five Familiar into into this bracelet. And I think that I I I would I was gonna say it would take probably a couple of hours, but I think with the divine tools, I imagine it'd be quite a bit faster. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything is sped up. I, th- I think there's definitely a moment where they're like they grab the tools and are about to work on the bracelet, and they're like, "Let me test it out first and then grab like a piece of metal and like carve into it and go, "Okay, this cuts like butter. Good thing I practiced first because the same amount of force would have ruined this." <laughs> and then they go back yes. and adjust the amount of force um, to work on it. Um, and yeah, I think like an hour later, you hear an excited knocking on the door again. <laughs> I feel like Lolly would be embarrassed from the last time, so she'd just look at Callista and be like, you get it. Okay. I know. Callista's laying on the bed. <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, okay. <laughs> they like, just like, roll over. <laughs> hey, mom. Here you go, finished. Okay. It doesn't look too different. Well, it would if you actually learned a bit of the blacksmithing I've been trying to teach you. Very clearly, you've been a change to it. Can't, can't you tell? <laughs> kind of like, um, yeah, yeah. Lolly's looks... not turning around. It's that awkward <laughs> sensation when your friend's getting yelled at, and you're just like, yeah. <laughs> okay. God. Yeah, I can, I can tell. It's, yeah. Okay, what's different then? Okay, I can't tell. I don't know what you did. What did you do with it? What did you do to it? It has a spell stored in it now. It, it can cast a cantrip. Lolly whips oh. around at that one. What cantrip? Oh. It's fine. It's just something you'll keep him safe. What next time cantrip he's ever in did you put in his bracelet? Find familiar. It's just so casually Jesus. like. Chris will turn to you, Luffy, and go. Find familiar is the one that makes an anim- like an animal. Yeah. You know, maybe it'll be fine. Maybe he'll pick a fish. <laughs> Zebra's going to pick. You think Zebra's going to pick a fish? As long as it's not a poisonous snake. I don't put that out there. Don't. Okay. Um, mum. Why? <laughs> so next time if he's ever in trouble we can send a familiar out and we can communicate with them see the familiar sorry I don't oh look a dead fish on the ground <laughs> see there must be there's magic carpets here magic carpets magic sorry. magic carpets magic he, pull, he puts it on a leash and like drags it around <laughs> oh my god that's so <laughs> gruesome oh my god <laughs> Eventually, that thing becomes gy- gyrodos. Just for- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Find familiar to find out. <laughs> I hate this cantrip. <laughs> Some cantrip, Iftrin. <laughs> yeah, no, I was going to put a cantrip in it, and then I realized the tools that I have could actually do a bit better, so I put Fan Familiar in there. Why are your tools different suddenly? I don't know how to explain it, but I think I have divine tools now. And there's a whole new room to the forge. I don't know how it happened. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to explain it to V. V hasn't noticed yet. She's in the kitchen right now with Farouk. And Mishkin and Kaiba. When did everybody else get here? Yeah, why is everybody here? What do you mean? Yes, his birthday is tomorrow. Why is is everybody here for his birthday? Why did we invite them? 
Were invited? Yes, I invited. Well, I invited Kaiba, and then I said Kaiba can invite others. I invited Mishkin. I assumed the others would come, but I thought they would get the date correct. I think Calista's like just looking back and forth between Etrian and Alifia, and just going, "I thought this was going to be a family thing." We've died with them so many times. We can at least enjoy a little I... bit more. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And Ziva yeah. loves them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have to handle a pet. And more mouths to feed. Okay. Okay. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to go to sleep. And Ignore she... this roll. <laughs> Interesting. Ignore it. It'll wait till the next one. Kaivar, you know well, it's lucky number four. <laughs> oh, it is lucky number four. You know it's ready when the cheese begins to brown and get bubbly over the top. That's when we take these out. We let them rest. Don't, don't touch it. Don't burn the top of your roof for your mouth off. But, uh, you want to eat it fast? You gotta, you gotta blow gently on it. Ah, uh, yeah. That's the stuff. <laughs> You're killing me. Oh, my gross. God. <laughs> <laughs> the Kaiba Farouk shipping allegations. You are not using them. <laughs> if you want to know what broke me, it was blow gently. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <sighs> Silly. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Thanks, V. Yeah, no worries. I'm, I'll be honest, we have plenty of food, but I'm glad that you brought some. Can always be more. Well, you know, I, I do have my fair share of appetite over here, and I, tomorrow I even brought, look at this. And he has a giant cured log of pepperoni. Ooh, it's gonna Ooh, be special tomorrow. This... Perfect, actually, because I was completely forgot, completely missed my skip my mind. We actually needed more of this. We actually oh. had the, most of it a couple of days ago. So this is perfect. Thank you. Uh. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm joking. Some, could be some, ideas, use. some ideas for this as well. Good. We used the whole thing. We got like five or six uh, more of them hanging. Oh, five or six. I. How much was this? I need. I. I can't pay you back. No. I can't pay you back for the amount of morning croissants, cinnamon rolls, breakfast sausages. The whole room and board. Even. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for coming to the party. I didn't. <sighs> I'm sorry I can't keep my dates you. right, but thanks for thanks for having us always. It's like it's a home away from pleasure. home. And I've never felt like that. Thank you. That's what Callisto says. I know he can be very creepy sometimes. I wouldn't have it any other way. He's going to give me a big hug. He's giving a big hug back. It's good to be home. Oh, gifts. Speaking of gifts, and I'm going to turn to Kaiva. I managed to get you this. And I'm gonna, they're going to pull up a new library card and if you're cool with this Robert I would love for V to have gotten a gotten a way of getting like a almost a VIP like higher access to the library um for Kaivar especially after seeing how interested and in love with knowledge they were and I think V V is very much like they're a librarian they're like <laughs> I, I feel like in another life, they're probably like a school teacher. The moment they see anyone interested in learning, they want to cultivate that as much as they can. So they're going to try, they would want to have gotten like a higher access library card for Kaiba to use. Oh. Oh. Uh, v. Yes, yes. Yes. Here you go. Um, it looks just like... Actually, give me the one I gave you earlier. 
You remember the card? Kaiva, Kaiva's gonna hand it back. He, he of course has it on him. It's one of his like five possessions. They take it and just casually toss it behind them and go, here you go, <laughs> and give you the other one. This is better. Oh. This should get you access to more floors and books in the library than before. I had to call in a few favors, but it's nothing to help someone who also wants to learn and chase knowledge. Uh, uh, v, uh, can I show you a gift in return? Yes, 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 no? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, given that there is no quite library card to this, Kaivar is going to pull out the tome, place one hand on it, and then reach out the other for um, V's approval. V, again, just kind of takes your hand. Okay. Um, Kaivar is going to give her the, the one-person momentary guest pass for the moment into the, the archives. The Vosborg archives. Oh. And, uh, yeah, as those unfold, psychic voice um, emanates into her head as it just begins to manifest. Long ago, you shared knowledge with me. Yes, but a uh, friend then told me to share this knowledge with uh, the world. You are the first person I have shown. Yes? I need to roll. Hold on. I need to roll. Uh, okay. They don't start crying. Uh, <laughs> but they're close. Um... Um, um, you feel them kind of squeeze your hand a bit tighter. This is a lot. Um, but, but um, it's incredible. If ever you need knowledge, uh, all this is for you as well, yes? Please, uh, find Kaiba, yes? Uh, I will, uh, I will show you, yes? Y yeah, um, wow. Um, wow, this kind of makes my gift not useful, um... No. All knowledge is a gift. You showed me this first. Yes. Yeah. Kaivar tenderly holds up the library card, and a sort of spectral copy of it manifests next to the other books that sort of roll out from the shelves. And it is not a book, but it somehow has the same sort of pride of place as the others that have sort of rolled in from the side, the other five tomes that have spoken of other realms and other worlds. Almost as though this is some kind of fine memorial plaque that tops off the collection. And it's not the same, but it is a representation of the message. Just as I was uh, welcome to learn, uh, thanks to you, uh, you and uh, others are welcome uh, to learn as well. Yes? Yeah. Um, thank you, Kaiba. You'll see that gently the moment unfolds again, and given the way that the mind link works it has been barely a second within the real time Ooh. still standing there book unfurled library card on the table other library card probably somewhere in the forge oh it's been a... 
been a fairly a century before I've been taken to, you know, mental plane. Ooh. Ooh, I think I a little bit. I need, I think I need to sit down a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nowhere to go and take a seat. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, yes, yes. Um, Farouk has very good uh, <clears throat> uh, zucchini bread. Yes, yes. I think I have some zucchini bread. No, Where's... Where's Ifjan? I haven't seen Ifjan in a bit. And they're gonna go <laughs> into the book. Oh, <laughs> stop! Oh, this is... This might just... <laughs> they might just pass out from shit. <laughs> We're going... to let rest set in for all of our characters. And the final scene that we're going to have for this evening. Unless, Mishkin, you want to have anything else outside because you've been away from the forge. Nope. We need to have the dawn of Ziva's birthday. You guys have to role play Ziva getting up first. Yeah. What well, did we did we resolve rolling for Kalista? My gun. Yeah, My the future of the mm. gun. No, we'll pick up we'll 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 pick up with that scene post. Okay. Next okay. next week, because that'll be the scene. Then you can fully act out that scene of you two, because I imagine that's what Iftrin would be working on when V comes in, and that's a <laughs> scene longer than what we have time for right now. <laughs> So we'll get a little flashback on that. Give us just a little taste of Ziva waking up in the morning. Easy. So obviously it's his birthday. <laughs> you said when he wakes up, boy hasn't gone to sleep. It's like he's just been waiting for the hours to pass by and he's hearing all these voices and just like, don't get out of bed, don't get out of bed, don't get out of bed, you'll get in trouble. And he's trying to listen into every single conversation that he can without luck. Everyone's whispering and it's frustrating and annoying. And so he's playing with his dancing lights and then putting them away and then pulling them out again. And then eventually probably does get a hint of a whisper of a sleep before he wakes up because he knows that as soon as that sun hits, it's time to get up and people are going to celebrate his birthday. It's his favorite time of year, every single year. Screw any other holiday, this is his holiday. This is Ziva's day. And so he had already gotten dressed the night before. He's already in his day clothes. He whips oh. past this blanket and just fully swings outside of the bed. He's like, okay, I gotta play cool. And then he runs to his door and he's making so much noise, opens it up, it's my birthday! As he is running down this hallway and banging on every single door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he's rushing down the stairs and probably Kaivar specifically, your box would be rattling. It's almost as if there's suddenly an earthquake. <laughs> oh, it's worse than that. As oh he, no. <laughs> as, Ziva, as Ziva runs out onto the, uh, onto the main floor of the Amber Forge, uh, Kaivar is finishing making Ziva's birthday present. Oh no! Farouk immediately runs detail and grabs Ziva's shoulder and goes, You've got to see these clouds outside, Ziva. Come, come here! Come here! <laughs> Did the sky make something for my birthday? And he's going with and you. He's so excited! They, I'm gonna they roll have. A stealth check of all stealth checks. You got advantage for me. Okay, here's the, here's the first. Here comes the second. All right. Oh, 27. This is just a flat oh, roll yeah. for Ziva. Just roll a d20. I swear to God, if he nat 20s and sees his birthday if present. Nat 20, I would <laughs> die. <laughs> this is gift. <laughs> nah, oh my God. So oh, that was so close. That was close. And so close. I love clouds. Wait, I have a question. Farouk knows. Can, I'm, I'm curious. Hold, hold on. He Let... rolled a two, which is Efren's number. Ah! Does that apply <laughs> oh to everyone in the clan, God. or is it just Efren? <laughs> <laughs> you did say that's in a the two, clan. That's a two on a percentile die, not okay, a two okay. on <laughs> the nat 20. Uh, but 
you will run out to the front because Farouk knows in particular that Lolly was up early this morning. And he points up and up in the sky, it does say, happy birthday, Ziva. You were so funny. I was going to do that. We're How did you know? There's no way <laughs> <laughs> that we had that thought. How are you feeling? And for once, we will end with a lovely, happy ending to get to start <laughs> next week with Ziva's birthday. That is so funny. I <laughs> That's sorry weird. to steal your moment then. Dang it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to run detail. I had to do it. Well, whenever you said uh, you have to show you something outside, I was like, oh, perfect. He's like leading this up for me. <laughs> of course, you'd be up early setting the weather for. She's mama. I'm going to take care of her baby. Boy. God, he's going to have the best birthday. I'm so ready. <laughs> Ooh, next week I'll get to figure out what that role is for. Mm. Mm. I'm excited. <laughs> hey, if there's a spot for. Iftrin to be forging your new pistol, it is in the new uh, f Room of Requirement Forge with Divine Tools. So, let's go. Yeah. Room of Divinement. That I thing is... That it was just claim firearm. Refuse to elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> she was upset that he didn't at least tell her that he landed and came back safely. <laughs> was out all day doing ward and stuff. And that's I a bet four. Lelufia probably let them know. So I feel like that, that's probably why she's not upset with Lelufia. But Callisto's like, I'm busy. I got one and stuff. I'll call her when I'm back, when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> mamas, no mamas. Yeah. Uh, that's a four part on that one. Uh, four part skill challenge. Because it goes from uncommon, Ooh. rare, very rare to legendary. Oh, oh, shit. Get it to legendary. Okay. Yeah. Get it all the way up to that plus three with full extra damage. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Love it. But that is where we will pick up next week. Oh, you guys so are so stupid talented. Ah, oh, I could listen to you guys for five, ten hours. I love it. I love it. No, mm. so good. I love Ooh. playing. I found it I found it very amusing that I think I played Callisto maybe for five minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Callisto, Callisto is barely in the episode, and I love that. <laughs> uh, we'll see you all then next Wednesday. Love you all.